The following is a special presentation of ESPN on ABC. Loud and rowdy Lane Stadium in Blacksburg, Virginia, here in the Blue Ridge Mountains. As you say, welcome to Saturday Night Football presented by Wells Fargo. An ACC collision between the defending national champs and second-ranked Clemson Tigers and the 4-0 Virginia Tech Hokies. This place about to come unhinged in 10 minutes' time. And welcome, Chris Fowler, Kirk Herbstreet, Maria Taylor, and Tom Rinaldi will join us Enter Sam Mann in about 10 minutes. You know I love the environment of this place. And this is a good matchup we got tonight. It's a rematch of the ACC championship game when Clemson held on to win. 11 touchdowns scored in the game. It was wild. Most of the guys who made the big plays have moved on. So some fresh faces on both sides. It gutted Justin Fuente to come out a loser in that game, he told us. Yeah, Justin Fuente, you can read his quote here. I mean, he said, it just kills me because we had a chance. They were that close. And I think it gave them confidence that night when they left that field, even though they lost the game. He's still rebuilding this program. And an opportunity like this is huge, especially in a rematch playing here at Lane Stadium where we know the crowd's always a factor. It's a rebuilt offense. They've been dominating easily, Kirk. But tonight, by far the biggest test for the freshman quarterback, Josh Jackson. Yeah, Josh Jackson has looked very impressive. Take Taking care of the football only one turnover in these first four games and to me it's a, it's kind of a little bit of a mix what he has to do he's got to be involved in the run game it's a great read late in the game against West Virginia felt the flow of the defense more to the outside and held on to it he's got to be able to be creative with not only his ability to improvise but the play calling getting safeties out of position expecting run and then they've got to hit a big play here's another kind of a deception play showing a flanker screen instead Cam Phillips acts like he's gonna block gets down the sideline for a big play. I keep saying big play, and there's a reason for that. I think it's going to be very hard for this Virginia Tech offense with the makeup that they have to sustain drives. They're not going to be able to go 12 plays, 80 yards. They need explosive plays, and that's why Jackson's going to have to capitalize when he gets them. Yeah, the Tigers' defense has been nasty. The lunch pail defense for the Hokies sets the tone. So another test for Kelly Bryant, who's passed every test so far for the Tigers this year. Well, two weeks ago, we had him at Louisville, and we thought, okay, now we're going to find out what Kelly Bryant has trying to replace the big shoes of Deshaun Watson. And what did he do? Business as usual. And we left there thinking, wow, this guy is impressive. He was running. He was throwing. He took the crowd out of the game. He, I think, really gained confidence in his ability to control this offense. And I think it was on that road and in that environment that now you come into this one and you think, can he do it again? This is a different atmosphere and a different challenge. He's got great playmakers around him. His wide receivers, he's going to have to get the football to. You see him right here. Deion Kane, more of a vertical threat. Hunter Renfro's been around these last couple years. And Ray Ray McLeod, that's who he's got to get the ball out to quickly. And also in the running game, kind of a new star in Clemson, Travis Etienne, who is explosive. And if he makes Virginia Tech miss as much as they attack, Look out, because he can go 80 in a hurry. Yeah, he's fun to watch. 13 yards a carry. So Clemson determined to have a fast start, take this big, rowdy crowd out of it. A 27-point fourth quarter saved it against Boston College. So enter Sandman. The traditional Metallica-inspired runout will happen in Lane Stadium. Can't wait for this one. The Hokies and the Tigers on a beautiful evening in Blacksburg. game up there in Blacksburg. I know those fans are going to be ready for us. We're going into a hostile environment. We're playing a great football team and defending national champions. Hey, all the team is amped up. It's a big time game. It's time to go to work. The Nissan pregame rush with Kevin Nagandi, Matt Brown, and Booger McFarland is next after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Hey, man, let me uh, get one for the fans. How do I look? Never look better. Welcome to the Nissan pregame rush. Nissan, premier partner of the Heisman Trophy. Hey there, 
Here at Spinning, we start with that Heisman Trophy talk. Kevin Nagan here, Mac Brown, and Booker McFarland. Saquon Barkley, uh, if everything goes to plan, he should be invited to New York City because we had one of those Very Heisman sweet. type of games, right? <laughs> like Started the game body. against yeah. Indiana, returned the kick for 98 yards, and then he made a fantastic one-handed catch. How about throwing for a touchdown? Well, we had Ricky Williams who won the Heisman at Texas, and I used to say, keep him rested, keep him healthy, get him the ball and say, Good job, Ricky. Penn State rolls. Georgia rolling in Tennessee. 41 0. Jake from State Farm was off the chain. Ball shut out for the first time since 1994. Meanwhile, on the Plains, this game on ESPN, number 13, Auburn. And the trickeration against Mississippi State, Matt. Yeah, their defense has been great. Jarrett Stidham is growing up, coming into his own. So Auburn may be a factor here at the end. What to make of Mississippi State right now? They are down 21 to 10 in the third quarter. Winless Florida State on the road against undefeated Wake Forest. Less than a minute to go. And this is the freshman quarterback, James Blackman. That's a beautiful pass. Absolutely great throw. Tremendous when he had to be. Yes, and a Den Tate, the 40-yard touchdown first win for Florida State this season. As we get ready for tonight's game, what will happen? What are you predicting? Well, I predict Clemson wins because they got better players, and especially lines of scrimmage. They're going to run the ball and take care of their young quarterback. Clemson wins their offensive line, better protect their young quarterback. Bud Foster will bring every blitz known to man tonight. We'll see how Kelly Bryant handles that. Clemson hasn't lost a true road game. Think about this since November of 2014. We'll see you at the half. Chris? Kevin, thank you. This is Cleland Farrell, part of the Tigers' ferocious front four. He's a Richmond native, extra inspired tonight to play in his home state. The matchup against the Hokies that he takes very personally. He feels they shunned him coming out of high school. Meanwhile, for the Hokies, the middle linebacker, Andrew Motua Pawaka, grew up in New Zealand and wanted to play rugby for the All Blacks, figures to be in the middle of the defensive scrum tonight as the Hokies try to slow down that high-powered Clemson offense. This has been the Nissan pregame rush. Kickoff from Blacksburg is coming up next. But first, a look inside Nissan's Heisman House. Are you ready for it? Ready for this presentation of the ACC on ESPN. Words really can't describe the atmosphere inside Lane Stadium. It is lit, Kurt. Hair trippers just dropping the flag in. LED lights all over them. And the Hokies in there, faithful. About to convene here in this cauldron of noise. Clemson has the grandest entrance in the sport. This is the rockinest entrance. Hokies dress. In their facility across the practice field, they make the walk into this claustrophobic tunnel. They'll go down a slope and make a left turn about 45 degrees. When they get in that tunnel, they'll see on their right the names of every Hokie senior, the last 27 teams. And eventually at the end, they will reach up and they will touch that hunk of limestone known as the Hokie Stone. With the words, for those who have passed and for those to come, they are urged to reach for excellence. Imagine the emotions of those 19, 20 year olds. This is a program that's been waiting for that big landmark win. And at home in front of this fan base, it's starving themselves. Big opportunity tonight against the defending champs. Underdogs trying to protect home turf. And you're right, this would be 
a landmark victory for this program. Only one win over a top five ranked opponent. Let's go. Justin Fuente off a 10 win division title in his opening season as they enter that dark cramped tunnel. And at the bottom, they will wait for a song that Metallica wrote 26 years ago. Enter Sandman has been used to lead this team out every home game since 2000. There is nothing like it. They all know the lyrics and they will sing along to enter Sandman. That's the Okie Stone right there. Here we go. Goosebumps. The jumping up and down registers on the seismograph. Yeah. <laughs> the, the, the earth literally shakes here. Clemson putting their all in chips as they get set to take the field. This is one of the best road teams in college football. They are not usually at all intimidated by environments like this. Respond very well. But the Hokie crowd will do their best, Kirk. Provides tech with fuel. The battery is full. But if they don't play well, nothing else matters. I could go on with the Metallica right. stuff. You know how, right. I know how it is to be 55 and watch this. Imagine yeah. being a player. Oh my God. <laughs> Justin Fuente is with Tom Rinaldi on the sidelines, Tom. Huh? Chris, thank you very much. Coach, you said one of your goals is to make scenes like this normal again in Blacksburg. How do you make that happen starting with tonight? Well, this is beautiful. This is college football, and we got to take it one play at a time, not try and do too much. Uh, we'll get after him pretty well. Against the defensive front you described as the best you've seen, have you coached your front and your quarterback to handle it? Well, we're going to have to handle the good with the bad. I mean, they're going to make some plays on both sides of the ball. We just got to play the next one. We appreciate it. Enjoy it, Coach. You bet. Thanks. Chris? Tom, thank you. Kirk, he knows that emotion can work both ways. And there's Kelly Bryant, who goes through warm-ups with a smile on his face. He just says, it's all about good vibes. But this is another level of test, as you said in the open. This is not Papa John's. It's not Louisville. It's a, it's a bigger challenge yeah, for him. Yeah, a big challenge. But great teams welcome these challenges. Championship teams like this environment. They want to be tested. We'll see if Clemson is the team that we think they are. Clemson, you're the victory team tonight. This is a head. This is a tail. What is your call? Tails. Tails is the call. Tails is the call. It is a, it's the tails. You won the toss. The second. Clemson has won the toss. They've elected to defer. Team that's won 11 straight true road games. 
They've beaten their last seven ranked opponents. We could go on and on with the Clemson superlatives, but let's go to Maria Taylor with Dabo Sweeney. All right, Coach, it's the first time your team's been in Lane Stadium since 2011. What's the mentality you want this team to take onto the field today? Well, just, just play well. You know, we're just trying to maximize our opportunities and, and exhaust this moment tonight. There'll be more down the road, but it's all about tonight. Just trying to play our best football tonight. That's what it's going to take. What a great environment, great atmosphere. We've got a good team we've got to play. What's the key to the fast start for your offense? Just take care of the ball, first of all. You know, we don't want to, we don't want to help them. We've got to settle in. You know, let's, let's get a beat on what they're going to do, what's going to be their plan, and, uh, you know, make sure that uh, we, we make them have to go the distance. So that starts with the offense doing a good job taking care of it. All right, thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Both coaches, no surprise, mentioning taking care of the football. All six head-to-head -head meetings since Tech joined the ACC have been won with the team that wins the turnover column. I'm still trying to recover from the interest. <laughs> I saw you jumping around I mean, oh over there with the crowd. Gosh, that is hype. That is college football right there. Just like Justin Fuente said, that is college football. He, he sure did say that. He also said you got to manage that. You got to calm down. Yeah, right? you Get the execute. pulse rate down yeah. a little bit. And how about our truck giving you a look at it? You guys did a great job. Awesome job. Thank you, fellas and girls. So Clemson deferring to the second half after winning the toss will kick it away. And this is Alex Spence. He takes over the kicking doodles for Greg Kugel, who last week suffered a freak knee injury in practice. So Spence, who has yet to attempt a field goal, is 5 of 6 in PATs, will kick it away. Henry Murphy, number 12, a junior wide receiver, is back deep. Buckle up. This will be a fun one tonight. Kickoff is returnable. Murphy at the goal line. Slips one arm tackle and gets half of the 25. And let's take a look at Josh Jackson, this poised, mature coach's son. Yeah, the coach's son, I think, says a lot about the freshman because of his maturity. Fred Jackson probably saw him on the Michigan sidelines. He was there for 23 years. As an assistant, how about finalist for the Michigan Player of the Year? Redshirted last year behind Gerard Evans and learned a lot. Now as a redshirt freshman, kind of exploded onto the scene against West Virginia. There's a proud Papa right there with the orange hat on. Very excited to watch his son. Hey, he's coaching high school football. Eight-hour drive to be here tonight. <laughs> for playing like last night. Trayvon McMillan is the back, and Jackson, under immediate pressure, has to fire it into the Clemson bench. Right away, Kendall Joseph came and pressured him. We talk so much about Bud Foster when you come to Lane Stadium, but Brent Venables is kind of the man in college football in the last three or four years. Firing defense, or fiery defense with a fiery defensive coordinator. They will come after the young freshman, try to confuse him, and especially the right side of the Virginia Tech offensive line. McMillan, the junior tailback, goes in motion. And Jackson flips it out far side. This is Sean Savoy, a true freshman wide receiver. Very well covered there. Mark Fields, the corner, made the tackle. And now Jackson will face a third and long. This great team pursuit, leveraging the football. Nice to see Mark Fields, who had a little bit of an injury last week against Boston College. Good to see him out there. This defense can fly to the football. And now they've got the, the freshman exactly where they want him on third and long. They show pressure right up the middle. It's Trey Lamar, the middle linebacker, just over the center. This is a very uncomfortable position against the Venables defense. They rush just four. It's a screen. McMillan will be trapped right there. Nothing doing. And so a three and out for Virginia Tech. And Justin Fuente, I thought, said something you don't always hear from a head coach slash offensive coordinator. A punt is okay. Telling Josh Jackson, we do not need a catastrophic mistake in this game. Throw it away. Don't make mistakes. Little simple screen here on third down. Just settle into the game. Three and out. Punt the ball. That's okay. What his message to his freshman this week is. And the punter is a true freshman. A rugby style punter from Sydney, Australia. Oscar Bradburn. And hits it off the side of his foot. No chance for a McLeod return. But excellent field position. Kelly Bryant takes over at his 47. And Kelly Bryant, 6'4", 220 pounds. A couple of things that I think he's going to need to do tonight. 
big part of his his style quarterback play is just playing with that composure on the road. He's going to get some one-on-one -on -one opportunities because of the way Virginia Tech will blitz. They're going to come after him. He's got to capitalize on that. And then I think when they come after him, remember, they play man-to-man. -man. Their backs are to the quarterback. He can get out of there, take off, and still make plays with his feet when he's dropped back to throw. It's the TNT backfield. Tavian Feaster, Travis Etienne. Feaster, the sophomore in the game, and he's got the football. Remember in the ACC championship game with Watson and company, a very fast start in the Hokies defense on their back feet and confused early. Yeah, and, and we, we really thought that Clemson two weeks ago when we had them on the road, they might be ease their young quarterback in. Remember, they came out throwing the football almost every play, really were the aggressor in how they attacked Louisville that night. Easter got four in the first play, motions out now, and they try to flip it to him in heavy traffic. Off the hands of Deion Kane, the diving attempt by Greg Stroman at a pick. It'll be third and six. Kelly Bryant coming off a game last week against Boston College at home where he threw two interceptions, only 140 yards through the air. Much more effective on the ground, over 100 yards and a couple of scores. See what Bud Foster calls in this third and six play. Tight man to man, shown across the board. Blitz. They pick it up. Downfield throw. Jump ball. Catch made. Right away, one of those 50 50 balls, and it's Ray Ray McLeod who went up and beat Brandon Faison. They're set up at the 23. And Ray Ray McLeod is 5'10, and Faison is 6'2. That ball is perfectly thrown by Kelly Bryant. His favorite ball is that fade to be able to throw the football downfield, and Faison never turned around to find the ball. 27 yard gain now it's Hunter Renfro out of the slot dodges one tackler and is hit inside the 20 you, know, you feel so much of the game is going to be won on, on battles like that on gonna, the edge it really on both sides one on one on the edge in the perimeter facing a veteran guy who's played for four years you would think he would have been able to re be able to read Ray Ray McLeod's eyes and get his body turned and head turned around to try to swat that ball away but he's never able to do it. Bryant rolls, looks across the middle and throws over the head of a very well-covered Renfro. And Terrell Edmonds worried number 25, the coveted number, normally number 22, a very rangy safety. If I'm Bud Foster, and, and knowing Bud Foster, I think he's going to do this. Make Kelly Bryant throw the football effectively all night. If you get beat deep, you get beat deep. But keep being aggressive, keep loading the box against that run game, and make Bryant throw the football, and make him beat your, your experienced defensive backs. Another third and long. Again, they pick up pressure. That is thrown for Renfro, who makes a catch inside the five. Worked his way all the way across. Now they move him around. He's in the inside, works to the outside, and he's got matched up against Terrell Edmonds. Look at him get the separation, and again, a perfect strike by Kelly Bryant. Throwing that ball away from the defender, but the route by Hunter Renfro and the separation made it pretty easy. First and goal. Feaster stacked up. If you want to puncture this crowd atmosphere and quiet things down, a drive like this, exactly what the Tigers wanted. Yeah, three and out. Not a great punt. Great favorable field position for Clemson. And just right up Dabo Sweeney's alley. What did he say when we said, what are you going to do when Bud Foster challenged you? Played man to man. What did he say? We're going downfield. We're going to find matchups. It's who we are. We're going to attack, the, attack this Virginia Tech defense. They've done it twice successfully already. Two for two in those downfield matchups. McLeod in motion. They fake it to him. And Bryant hammering straight forward. Stopped a yard short of the goal line by both Edmonds brothers, Terrell and Tremaine. Uh, he, he's sitting right here. He's the guy who ends up making the play. Heels right at the goal line. He knows where he is. He avoids the traffic. Able to come right at about the half yard line. Make the play right there with his, his assist from his brother, Terrell. Ryan is a 220 pounder who has seven rushing touchdowns already this season. Under center on third and goal. And they missed fire. They brought. The heavy package in there. They brought Dexter Lawrence, the defensive lineman, into the backfield. Number 42. And Wilkins, the other defensive lineman, 
Not too experienced in that situation. It costs him five. Yeah, the, the big fellow, Christian Wilkins, moving the right side of that offensive line, moving, changes things on how you got to believe Jeff Scott and Tony Elliott now will try to attack being moved back. You'll see just a helmet. See Wilkins leaning there. Now watch, now they're back in the shotgun, and now they're maybe trying to find those matchups, those one-on-one -on -one matchups, trying to maybe find Hunter Renfro, who's up at the top. Ryan from the pocket, has time, delivers across the middle, in and out of the hands of Deion Kane. And the penalty is costly, and the Hokies defense makes a stand. Here comes the field goal team. What an effort there by Chicago to knock that ball away at the last second. Plenty of time to make the throw. Chicago, I think, gets a hand in there. He does. Knocks that ball away. Ball's well thrown to Kane. But Chicago does a good job of knocking it away just at the last second. It's a linebacker on a wide receiver. Yeah, drop back in coverage there. So here is Alex Spence, again, replacing Greg Hugel from 23 yards, has not made a field goal in his Clemson career, just PATs in the win over BC last week. And he's able to knock it through from 23. So the Tigers take good field position, move it 47 yards and 10 plays, and take the lead in white players. Coney Island has been a... Taco Bell is a proud partner of the college football playoff. Be on the lookout for Taco Bell student sections and passion fans like these at games all season long. Crowd able to stay involved because of that great play by Chicago Kirk to deny a Clemson touchdown and they settle for three in their first possession. And yeah, that, that would have to be considered a win for Bud Foster and the Virginia Tech defense. Remember the false start by Christian Wilkins moved him from the half yard line back to about the five and a half. Spence to kick it. And Ray Murphy again standing at his goal line. Able to slide back to the 23 yard line. Justin Puente in his second season following the legend Frank Beamer. After a couple years at Oklahoma, he actually transferred to Beamer's alma mater at Murray State and finished up there at TCU under Gary Patterson. He worked with Andy Dalton, the Horn Frogs team that went to the Rose Bowl, took Memphis to the conference championship in 2014, and then last year was ACC Coach of the Year, a 10 win Coastal Division champions. He's had a very high bar in his first year here, really did. And I would say somewhat of a seamless transition considering he's filling the shoes of a living legend in Frank Beamer kept Bud Foster on the staff. There's coach Beamer there right just right behind the pole there. Second possession Trayvon McMillan is stood up and hammered hard by the middle backer Trey Lamar. Well, there, there's a bit of a mismatch up front at the line of scrimmage which most teams have when they face Christian Wilkins and Dexter Lawrence and Farrell and Austin Bryant. I mean it's just. It's the deep end of the pool. I mean, these guys get yes, it after is. it. They move them around. They know the scheme. It's not just they're big and athletic. They're intelligent, and they know this system. Play fast. Jackson delivers a strike, and this is Savoy, the receiver, who's going to be hit hard, a yard short of the first down. But Savoy having to step in and fill some big shoes in this receiving core. Yeah, undersized at 5'9", but kind of stocky at about 190 pounds. And third and one, they send Savoy in motion, trying to play fast. And now they'll slow down and check out the defensive formation as the Tigers look to Venables for their adjustments. Jackson is not going to get first down yardage. A little tentative. He's not a bad runner, but he ran into big Cleland Farrell, the Virginia native, who is extra inspired whenever he plays the Hokies. Now that, that was a, a heck of an effort by Farrell. And a great call by Brent Venables to slant and angle this defensive line. Watch him just collapse down. And Braxton Pfaff, 74, right there, he just collapses him, pushes him back, and keeps Fred, the freshman Jackson, short of that first down. So a couple of three and outs. Let's see if Bradbrook can connect a better punt this time. It's Renfro back there. He makes a fair catch at the 33-yard line. So the Tigers back on offense after a 35-yard punt of 3 nothing. Can't have my debit card. Saturday Night Football on ABC is presented by Wells Fargo.
Wells Fargo, building better every day. And in part by Nissan, innovation that excites. A couple of those hokey greats have work to do on Sundays. Bruce Smith with his guest picker on game day. Michael Vick and Corey Moore are down there. Corey time. Moore. Bruce Smith did a good job this morning on college game day. And how about the career Tyrod Taylor has wow. been able to build for himself in the NFL. Congratulations to him. Vick just inducted into the Hall of Fame here this week. Still a controversial figure even among the Hokie fans. Fabian Feaster is again the back. They give it to Ray Ray McLeod on the end around. Mylon Richard, the tight end, is out there on the edge blocking. Pretty nice first down game. Two big throws by Kelly Bryant. Got Clemson to be able to get down deep into Virginia Tech territory. They really, what they want to do is stretch this Bud Foster defense out. Not just vertically, but as you just saw there with the jet sweep, also make them respect the outside, the ability to attack on the perimeter. Pressure off the edge, but Feaster's got it in space. Vinny Mahota, the defensive end, a good job corralling the back. It's tough to do. You bring the outside, like kind of the nickel back, and you drop the defensive end. He's respectful of Feaster. Now he's out there one on one by himself with Feaster and does a pretty good job at 270 pounds. Remember, he's a former defensive tackle that's moved out the defensive end. Already the fourth third down play for the Tigers' offense. They need four. Hokies don't blitz. Bryant has time and has a wide open Feaster. Feaster racing to the end zone. They forgot about the tailback and he makes him pay. 60 yards. And Clemson stretches the lead. They do not look rattled no. or intimidated at all. Just a blown assignment by the Virginia Tech defense. I think it was Tremaine Edmonds, the linebacker, who should have been matched up with Beaster out of the backfield. His eyes just got caught up in the backfield, playing man-to-man, -man, and nobody picks up Beaster. Who, when he gets out, he can go. Tremendous speed. First time Beaster's caught a touchdown pass. All the hype about young Travis Etienne. Tavian Feaster says, don't forget about me. I got some running back skills, too. Oh, he can go. And when you put him out there in the open field like that, as you said, on the road, inner Sandman, in Blacksburg, no problem. 10-0, Tigers. Forty-nine is Tremaine Edmonds, the freaky junior linebacker, the keeper of that lunch pail, that symbol of the blue-collar defense for the first time. It's a huge honor, but... Uh, a mistake in coverage there, and the Tigers jump out 10 zip. Devon McMillan, the running back, is now the kick returner. Busy first quarter for Alex Spence. And McMillan will leave this one there. Let's go back to this touchdown. Ray Ray McLeod is matched up man to man right here. He's going to work underneath. Tight end Richard is right here. He's matched up man to man here. And the mistake is here. Watch the middle linebacker hesitate. He's matched up with the running back. Running back shows that he's going to block. And then Feaster slips out. And that's where I think Edmonds makes the mistake. He got fooled into thinking that Feaster was going to block. See the hesitation. Then he slides out. And then he leaves him alone. And he, again, the speed that he has, you're just not going to catch him. He's a 10 400 meter guy at 220 pounds. Okie is just 10 yards in their first six plays. Three short completions for Jackson. And now this is Savoy on the end around. It's not easy to outflank the Tigers defense, but that's a very productive first down play as we check in with Cassidy Hubbard from the studio. Cassidy. Thanks, Chris. AT&T Field Pass, Oklahoma State looking to bounce back from their loss to TCU last week. Hooks up 7-0 until Mason Rudolph is intercepted by Demarcus Fields, and he takes it off 95 yards for the pick six. We're all tied up at seven at Texas Tech. Chris, Herbie, back to you. More scoring to come in that one. Oh, yeah. So what can the Hokies do, Kirk, to capitalize on a nice seven-yard gain and build a drive and give that defense a chance to settle down? 
They have to attack the perimeter away from that line. Jackson keeps it for a short game. Once again, it'll be third and one. I, I think you have to try to get the ball out wide. It, it's it's right now, it's a mismatch up front at the line of scrimmage. And anything into the interior, even here third and short, it's tough to be able to try to get yardage because the, not only the, the skill, the size, but with Brent Venables slanting and angling those that defensive line, it makes it very tough. McMillan is the back. Defensive line jumping around and Jackson trying to escape a trap in the backfield has to work very hard But they do move the six for the first time out across the 40. There is a flag down Illegal formation offense Five men in the backfield five yard penalty third down That's a crusher for Fuentes offense. Yeah, all three of the receivers were lined up in the backfield Along with the running back and the quarterback. We've got one, two, three, and then the two in the backfield. And that is crushing for Virginia Tech. Now they need six on third down. Both teams will look to their respective sidelines for those late adjustments. Play clock down to five. Jackson throws it and it's incomplete. Tanner Muse was covering the tight end, Chris Cunningham, and the penalty costly for the Hokies. Fourth down again. You can tell even when they don't get pressure, watch Josh Jackson feel this pressure. He senses blitz. Really, nobody's in there, but see how he's just throwing off of his back foot. I don't think he had a chance with Cunningham anyway, but you can just see all arm as he's falling back, and that. That's what that defensive line and, and even when they don't get in they create that Bradburn this is more like it much deeper boot drives McLeod back to the 20 It was just effortless dominance. They scored nine straight possessions against East Carolina This is not the kind of resistance. They have not seen really yet as an offense Kickoff week four of the NFL Sunday NFL countdown 10 o'clock over on ESPN Rex Ryan Charles Woodson Matt Hasselbeck Randy Moss Getting after each other. The new host, Sam Ponder, of course. Sunday, 10 a.m., also streaming live on the ESPN app. So Kelly Bryant and Clemson trying to add to this 10 0 lead. And here is Travis Etienne, the electric true freshman out of Louisiana. Only has 23 carries, but he's averaged almost 13 yards per carry. Had an 81 yard touchdown run, electric against Louisville. And Bud Foster, if there's ever a time to be gap sound with a defense and not bust a coverage or bust a responsibility, it's when number nine checks in. Number nine's got it again, and they are all over him. Good job by Trevon Hill, the defensive end, and it'll be third down. Yeah, that, that's more like Virginia Tech defense. Hill right here, the speed to get outside, and he understands how fast ETN can get out there. Also, you saw the big linebacker Edmonds fighting off the block. Getting Clemson again to a third down. Ryan has been superb on third down, throwing the football. They need six here. CJ Fuller is now the back to the left of Brian. Hokies don't blitz. And Bryant steps up, trying to run for it. Slides down across the 30. They'll mark him. It looks just short of the first down. Let's see where they put that football down. Andrew Motua Puaka, the middle linebacker, was tracking him down. They showed blitz. They ended up dropping out of it. Great job by Bryant. He didn't have anybody open. And they might take a, a peek at this for the spot. The knee goes down. Where is the football when it hits? Right there. Looks like it's right short of the 30 from this angle. They've actually put the ball down across the 30 yard I think, line. I think it's at the third, maybe just barely to the 30. If they take a peek at it. It's fourth down. Clemson already is going to punt anyway, but. 
It felt like a huge stop for Foster's I, defense. I, I was going to say, the I, tide, I, huh? I know it's early in his game, but if, you, if you've watched Clemson over the last few years, they, they like being challenged. They like people doubting, can they handle Lane Stadium? Can they handle this Virginia Tech defense? And the way this game started, it was important for Virginia Tech to stop the bleeding. Greg Stroman comes back to receive the punt of Will Spires. He's had a terrific year punting the football. Fifth in the FPS, more than 47 yards a punt. Huckies peel back for a return. Not a great kick, and Stroman steps up and makes the fair catch at the 32 yard line. A week for Monday night football matchup for Cousins and the Redskins at Arrowhead Stadium to take on the undefeated Kansas City Chiefs. Coverage beginning with Monday Night Countdown, served by Applebee's at 6 Eastern on ESPN. Game also available in Spanish. It's a good game, ESPN too. Chiefs off to a good start. Alex Smith, no doubt. Different look here for Virginia Tech offensively. The trips. I'm going to motion it tied in over. You see it, McMullen. That is just not open for business. No. The middle is clogged tonight. How about big Albert Huggins getting in on the action? The big fella going to chase it down from behind. It just opens up and he, he almost gets there. But look how fast that defense flows. I mean, the linebackers are trying to eat tonight, too. They can't get there because the <laughs> defensive line's making all the plays. It's a screen. McMillan. Gets a couple blocks, gets out near the 40 before Dorian O'Daniel knocks him down. It'll be third down. They'll need about four. That's a good call where a defense is getting upfield so quickly. One way to try to slow him down is if you can get the screen over top of that sudden surge, you've got a little bit of room to work. Cam Phillips, the top receiver, finally gets involved and makes a catch, and they'll finally move the sticks at the 45. And Cam Phillips was in motion, trying to get an indicator on whether it was man or zone. Clemson sat back in zone. He looked like he was going to go out to the sideline, came back, and that's his favorite target, Josh Jackson, looking for number five, Cam Phillips, whenever he can. 200th career catch for Phillips, who's tracking down all of the Virginia Tech receiving records. Held by Isaiah Ford, who was the main guy in the last couple of years. See if that settles Jackson down a bit. Deshaun McLeese is now the back. He's got it. He's kind of a shifty back, a slashing runner, physical as well, part of that rotation. 5'9, but 220. With, with the fast flowing defense like that, sometimes a shiftier back can cut back against that speed. And he was able to be a little bit more elusive there than what we've seen from McMillan. Part of the rotation, Stephen Peoples out of the game tonight with an ankle injury. So it'll be McMillan and Deshaun McLeese may see the freshman Jalen Holston as well. Quente does not like to feed one back, likes to keep him fresh and rotate the carries. And we talked about how hard it is to sustain drives. They need big plays. It's DJ Carroll on the end around and the this scrappy little receiver able to make a couple yards there. Clemson's defense honestly has gotten to that point where Alabama is defensively with, with the, the big talent. statement. It is. It's what, in my opinion, it's where they are. And it has a lot to do with Brent Venables. It's the way they recruit, it's the way they develop. And when you play Alabama or you play Clemson, you're not going to win by driving the ball down the field. You've got to find matchups, and I think that's part of what Justin Fuente is doing right now with the different formations and different looks. He's trying to find out where eventually they can try to make a play because it's going to have to be some big plays tonight. He needs six on third down, final 20 seconds of the quarter. Jackson immediately pressured, just has to unload it, and it's tips and incomplete. Tried to get it to Phillips over there. It's single coverage with Carter, but it's fourth down. Yeah, Carter is a fifth-year guy. Rare to see fifth-year guys, but he is... A, a very good cover guy at 5'9". These are the battles that we're going to watch tonight. Can Cam Phillips beat guys like Ryan Carter and Mark Fields and Trayvon Mullen? So Tech able to finally pick up a first down and get to midfield. And here comes Bradburn again. 
And it's a high boot which will bounce into the end zone. Five seconds to play in the first quarter that has been dominated by the Tigers. Total yards 127 to 35. It's sort of shades of that ACC championship game. Tigers got off to a fast start. Hokies were reeling. Eventually hung around and battled back and made it tight at the end. If you remember that night, Trot Evans and running the football in the red zone became a big part of what they were doing, creating turnovers, kind of kept them in the game. A fake punt. A fake yeah, punt. They, they I mean, to come back. They yeah, need they, something like that. Exactly. Right. Yeah. You and I at the break, we were saying it's either going to be something on defense or special teams. If Virginia Tech's going to give themselves a chance, they need some things to happen tonight. ETN in the game. And Hokies are pointing across at that Tigers offensive line. It'll be a false start. Yeah, like the left false guard. start. Offense. Number 51. Five yard penalty. First down. It's that steady guard, Taylor Hearn, is averaging 12 yards a carry as a rusher. It's not bad. Got that ball picked, <laughs> scooped it up against BC. <laughs> For a guard, that's an excellent rushing average. Yeah, pretty good. Hopefully, he doesn't have another carry the rest of the year. <laughs> Maintain that average. Another whistle before the snap. No play here. Snap infraction. Offense. Number 50. Five yard penalty. Anything that hasn't so far. That's the third such penalty on Sweeney's offense in the quarter. Justin Falsinelli, the center. Falsinelli, the center. I I, I, that's one of those where he, maybe he's moving the football around a little bit. He looks confused about the call. <laughs> First and 20 now, back at the 10 yard line. Dabo Sweeney running down to call a timeout. The play clock had plenty of time left for something he didn't like. So the Hokies defense trying to get the football back. Clemson very sharp in the first quarter, a 10 0 lead for the defending champs. Sweeney could have waited one more play and they could have conferred at the end of the first quarter, but saw something he didn't like. Trying to calm his offense down. Five seconds to play in the quarter. First and 20 after the back to back five yard penalties. Crowds come back into it now. They feed the fake to ETN. Bryant keeps it on the edge, and Kelly Bryant spun around. It's almost all of the 20 yards on what will be the final play of the first quarter. It's very calm, collected, composed quarterback. Leading Clemson to a 10 0 lead. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. We are back on Saturday Night Football, presented by Wells Fargo. This presentation of the ACC on ESPN. Kelly Bryant, a couple of clutch third down throws to McLeod for 27 yards in the opening drive, to Renfro for 16, kick a field goal, and a 60 yard catch and run by Tavian Feaster. Oh, on second and short, they feed ETN, who shows his strength. You know about the speed, but he's stronger than he looks. He really is that lower body. He's able to run through tackles. Remember, it was first and 20 near the end of the first quarter. And Kelly Bryant, we were going to break there. Maybe we'll go back later and, and look at that. But Kelly Bryant, with a heck of a move there on, on Mook Reynolds, got it to very manageable there on second down. This this offense completely different obviously without Deshaun Watson much much more dangerous running the football with him at quarterback No doubt much more of a natural runner Feaster They fake it to him Brian high throw and it's Milan Richard the tight end who goes up and wins that little battle for a short game Richard just his seventh catch this season the physical tight end, not the same kind of player that Jordan Leggett was last year in that spot. Yeah, they got tipped at the line of scrimmage, and Kelly Bryant's reading the linebacker Edmonds. If he came up to stop the run, he's going to throw it to his tight end Richard. 
An RPO run pass option. Good read of Edmonds up. Throws it over the top, but it did get deflected. Yeah, Tim Settle, a big 335 pounder, got a couple fingers on it. The cloud comes in motion. Little pop pass. And turns the corner is knocked down by Matua Puaka. It'll be third down and short. It was hard to find a football. Virginia Tech's defense doing a pretty good job there. Any rate, Brian is a, is a ball handler. He's outstanding. Not outstanding. Brandon Streeter, their quarterback coach, does a really, really good job. In fact, I was talking to Tony Elliott, the offensive coordinator, co-offensive coordinator on the field. We were talking about that very thing with Brian. He just could not say enough great things about Brandon Streeter and the work he does with the quarterbacks at Clemson. Look out, Feaster motions out. And it's third and five, empty backfield. Bryant will be dropped short of the first down as Tim Settle, that big nose tackle who goes 335, dropped him. That's a One heck of an effort play. there by the big man, isn't it? I love a man in four who weighs 335. <laughs> Watch, it. Watch it. They're going to try to cut him. How about the big guy, 330, 335 pounds, oh, able to get over the top of it. I, see that. I love it. I love when the big guy's worth a single digit. That's honestly a great play by Settle. Gets airborne, stays on his feet, and then he's got to make the tackle. So Stroman back deep. Spires gets a nice boot away and drives him back inside the 15. And there comes a flag as Stroman turns the corner, will be knocked down at the 20. A couple of flags are out. It's got to be an illegal block. Yeah, Donis Alexander has been suspended the last two games, is back tonight. He's a corner defensive back, but they're on special teams. It's a 50 yard kick, and the penalty will move the ball the closer return. to the goal line. Illegal block in the back. Receiving teams. Number 36. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. You see Alexander here, 36. Each. And that's just, and you can almost see he started to hit Ryan Carter, then he wanted to let, let up, but he'd already made contact. Tech will start with the ball at the six. Cassidy Hubbard with your studio update. Number 25 LSU, which has won 49 straight non-conference home games, struggling against Troy. Jordan Chun scurries 74 yards, brought down at the one, but that would lead to a touchdown. Trojans up 17-0 in Death Valley on ESPNU. Chris Hervey, back to you. All right, Cassidy, a first down incompletion is dropping into coverage. Kendall Joseph got a hand on Jackson's pass. Cleveland Farrell pressured he almost, him. He almost got there, and with the ball back here, with the way this game has gone, Josh Jackson needs to play smart. He's played smart all year, but especially back here, they cannot afford to turn the football over. What can this offense count on, though? Not much has worked against this. Nasty defense so far. Just 35 total yards in their four possessions. Now some adjustments. Uh, center moved the ball. So Wilkins jumping around. Half infraction. Offense number 64. Penalty is half the distance to the goal line. Let's go to Tom Rinaldi. Chris, talking to the Hokie coaches, you heard them praise Josh Jackson for being so even keeled, the coach's son, of course, which we talked about at the start of this game. But they also said he has a presence, and you could see him demonstrate it going up and down to every member of the offensive line during that last defensive series, trying to encourage them. Been a tough start to this game, but that even keeled demeanor may have to serve him. It'll be tested right here in this series. Sure is. Born to play quarterback, done so since he's six years old, growing up around the game. Very impressive guy, but this is by far his biggest challenge. From the end zone, Jackson will take off as a blocker and picks his way out to the eight-yard line. It'll be third down. You mentioned how do you attack this Clemson defense right now. Number one, the field position has been really, really tough for Virginia Tech, starting most of their drives deep in their own territory. But when the defensive line and the linebackers are controlling the run game, it really allows the back end to not feel like they have to get involved in the run game so they can take away the receivers and the threat of the passing game. And right now, Josh Jackson somewhat limited in how they're attacking through the air. It's a screen. And Phillips is battling for yards. They'll spot him a yard short. And there's Farrell out there letting him know. He, he feels like 
He was quote cussed out by the Hokies coaching staff. They didn't really show great interest in this Richmond guy. He gets jacked up to play the Hokies. In, in fact, Dabo Sweeney told us this week. He said, "Hey, hey, <laughs> hey, hey, we're, you're play, we're playing Virginia Tech every week. It's every week we're playing Virginia Tech." He, he said he gets to a different level emotionally. Always plays with great fire, but especially when he's going against the Hokies. Absolutely. Forced four, three and outs already. Oscar Bradburn, the Aussie. It's a better kick away. Renfro has to backpedal and falls down as he makes the fair catch at the 32 yard line. So after a shaky start, that's a much better punt from the Aussie. 50 yards that time. Not every rivalry is a fair fight. Clemson Tigers once again the buzz kill on the road for an enthusiastic crowd. This time it's Virginia Tech. A couple weeks ago it was Louisville. And the Tigers take over up 10 nothing. A lot of that because Kelly Bryant number two seems like he's a very tough customer to, to rattle. Fabian Feaster scored the touchdown earlier on the reception back in the game, but Bryant's keeping it. And he's just able to navigate to the edge and spins free. What a running quarterback this guy is. Yeah, and, and Mook Reynolds, I think, is underestimating the threat. Watch him just run by. I mean, he, you've got to realize that Kelly Bryant, he, he can go. He runs away from Trevon Hill. He's able to get away from that second level of the, of the linebackers. And he's, when he gets out there, he's not looking to just just kind of get to that, that first level. He's looking to pick up 20, 30 yards. Some of the new faces that comes in his receiving core are in the game. It's Bryant rolling out, being chased by a 335 pounder. Settle does his best, but uh, that's a mismatch in foot speed. Yeah, and they lost contain with Gaines coming down. He shoots down inside, and now it's the big fella, Tim Settle, who's a great athlete for his size, but at 335, again, you're not going to catch Kelly Bryant. We appreciate the effort. Second and about the length of the football. We feed Feaster and burst up the middle. The ball inside the 40. So you, you get Kelly Bryant on a on a zone read two plays ago. Now the defense. Now that's right. That's right. We got to be worried about Kelly Bryant. Then he scrambles to the outside. And now just when you start to get too caught up and concerned about what he can do on the edge, they remind you. Don't forget about 220 pound Feaster that can rip up the middle. Usually they follow it up with some play action after that too. Bryant straight back from the pocket. Downfield shot and he threw it over the head. One of those freshmen, T. Higgins, has made three catches on the young season. He was working against Alexander. And pretty good coverage by Alexander. T. Higgins at 6'4, 200 pounds. A vertical threat with that length. But Donis Alexander, who's been out, we mentioned, suspended the last couple weeks. Big physical corner with him stride for stride. Bryant, after briefly looking downfield, again, another Bryant productive run. Stop at the 30, it'll be third and three. You know, the Clemson offensive line a week ago against Boston College had, had some issues, especially in the first three quarters against the Blitz. Different deal tonight. This is a good Virginia Tech defensive front, and they're getting a push. And when Bryant drops back to throw, he's got time. And if things aren't there downfield, he's taking off and getting positive yards. Again, a threat to run as they try to convert on third and three. And he is going to take off. Hokies do a good job corralling him, but he's got the strength to get the first down. How about that? How about that? 6'4, 220 pounds. I'm going to spot him back actually, just short perhaps, but yeah. Haushin Gaines, the linebacker. I mean, those are big guys. Yes, they are. He's fighting through those linebackers. He tries to get around one, and then he's carrying two more close to that first down marker. I thought maybe he had gained a little bit more than the spot. They bring out the sticks, but it looks like it's going to be fourth and. Nope, oh, it is a first down. The yellow line was a little bit off, and they'll move the sticks after all. Again, the effort by Bryant. If they score on this drive, that third down run. 
by Kelly Bryant. In fact, this whole drive, Kelly Bryant's been making plays running the football. And that's the difference with Deshaun last year was kind of slippery and picked his spots. And this year with Kelly Bryant, it's a different deal in how they're running the football. He's number three in the FPS in rushing touchdowns. Not, not for quarterbacks, for all players. So yeah. whether it's a couple yards on third down or a touchdown in close, it's been very, very difficult to stop. Already eight carries tonight in his first half. From the pocket. Downfield shot over the head of Kane. So he's missed on a couple of deep shots. That's been the one thing he hasn't done great tonight. So you got the jet sweep in motion, which affects the eyes of the linebackers and safeties. Deion Kane actually came down, looking like he might be blocking, and then boom, releases late. And Edmonds does kind of fool, caught him, caught him off guard. He had him by two or three steps, just put too much on the football because Kane had a touchdown. Such confidence in the running game, they can take that deep shot on first and ten, and then just feed Feaster, who hammers ahead, and it'll be third down and long five. Honestly, I think the biggest difference in the last few years from Clemson, from where they were with Sammy Watkins and the C.J. Spillers, was I think they were more of a kind of a perimeter team, a team that had to attack on the edges. Now, man, they've got confidence in their backs, confidence in their offensive line. They're more physical. More balanced. Perfectly balanced. Ryan looking to throw for it on third down and airmails it way over the head of Kane. Alexander was in coverage. They choose not to run it on fourth and six or third and six, and now it's fourth yeah, down. A little bit of field goal. A little bit surprising. Tried the back shoulder fade, just sailed on it. Threw it a little bit high. See how he wanted to come back away from the man to man coverage. And it's a good route by Deion Kane. He has Alexander beaten. Ball just thrown again high that time by Bryant. Settle got an arm up, maybe changed the trajectory of the throw. Yeah. So we'll see. Spence now made the chip shot earlier from 23. And the new kicker for the Tigers attempts this one from 41. Will Sweeney, the coach's son, is the holder, and this one is pushed. Never had a chance. It's wide right. And midway through the second quarter, Hokies trying to hang around, still down just 10. Welcome. How's it going? Hi. Hi. Okay, so you've got two friends here. Yes. This is the J.D. Power Award for dependability. Now, I want you to give it to the friend that you think is most dependable. Oh! <laughs> wow. That's just not fair. The bear. With this in Blacksburg, Chris Felica with uh, his annual test or weekly test for us here. Go ahead, Bear. Hello, guys. Big T fella. Tonight's Athlete Trivia question. The Hokies 1-30 and 30 all time versus top five teams. Which team has the worst winning percentage versus top five teams amongst teams with 30 games? Versus I'm going to buzz in. I, know, I happen to know this. You're, you're buzzing in already. I'm buzzing in already. You must... There's a completion near side. Henry Murphy catches it from Jackson and gets nine. He must have looked at up I, for I, game day one I, year. I, I have a feeling that it is one of Felica's favorite college football programs. Is it the Indiana Hoosiers? Yes, one in 60. Tonight, I'm not sure we have a question. The answer is indeed Indiana, one in 60 <laughs> after that blowout loss today in Penn State. I know it pains you to say that, Bear, because you enjoy the Hoosier football program. I, I do enjoy the Hoosier program, but they, 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 they took a beat down again today, so they're now one in 60. Lions look good. Nittany Lions. Wow. Hammered Opening Indiana. kickoff. The Sa best player Saquon. on the planet, Saquon Barkley, took it, went, what, 98 yards? Yep. Remember, set the tone pretty early there. That slow down from the points we saw a week ago. After a first down, Jackson into a clogged middle, hesitates, and that's trouble against this defense, but you can't blame them. They're just no creases. There really isn't. The defensive line's eating up that offensive line, and they're getting a great push. The linebackers are cleaning it up. Saquon, he actually threw for a touchdown on top of the kickoff return. They're trying to get him scores in every conceivable way. <laughs> he is, uh, he's special, man. It's just so much fun to watch. Bunch formation to the right. They throw it back across. And this is Murphy again. The young guy's been yep. busy. 
You're into Clemson territory. Clemson, I think, came in defensively more concerned about Cam Phillips based on the film study. And all of a sudden, you get a couple first downs. Now you can get tempo. You, their whole thought process is try to wear down Clemson's talented defensive line. But you need a few first downs to be able to do that. Absolutely. Crowd right back into it now. Five receiver look. McMillan, the back, is in the slot to the left. And now comes in motion. Whistled before the play. There's a timeout called by timeout. the Hokies. Virginia Tech. First charge timeout. Timeout on the field. So we'll take a break. Hokies finally move the ball across midfield. We go from Blacksburg to the big house. Saturday night of football presented by Wells Fargo. Wolverines who are Idle today, ranked number eight against Michigan State. The Spartans holding on for a nice win against Iowa. Remember, half hour earlier kickoff time when we do a Big Ten game, so 7.30 Eastern time. The Clemson band up there at the top of the stadium, that is row quintuple Q, the very last row of the stadium. That's where they put the, the tuba section. Hokie's got something going here. Jackson trying that middle with the quarterback run. This time he's able to move the pile for about four. Something to remember, Justin Fuente, they finally built a little bit of momentum. They finally had Clemson defensively looking and, and maybe a little bit on their heels. And right when they were able to create that momentum, timeout, which allowed Clemson to kind of gather themselves a bit defensively. Venables tries to watch the offense as long as he can before signaling adjustments to his defensive guys. Delay to McMillan. And he gets a running start and trade by McMillan into the secondary, spinning and twisting inside the Clemson 30. Best play of the night so far for the Hokies. That was a great job of rolling him. You see how the linebacker flows with it. Just by rolling him to the right, Joseph had to react to the quarterback moving, thinking it's a rollout, and then he cuts back, and it makes it much easier blocking angles for the offensive line to get up to the linebacker. Picked up 19 yards. Now Jackson, pump fake, was looking for Phillips, who was well covered, has to just throw it on the sidelines to try to come back for it, but it's incomplete. Yeah, they, they, they are determined to take away Cam Phillips. Two. Clemson defenders downfield no chance and he was kind of a, a, a hesitate double move trying to get down the sideline but Clemson defends that very very well He's trying to get him to bite a little slant and go and there's Mark Fields you can also see Tanner Muse there They're doing everything they can no way Cam Phillips is going to make a play downfield they want someone else to have to he had a dozen catches against them in the ACC championship game just two so far now this is Carroll on the end around he has slammed down hard by three Tiger defenders Carroll about 170 pounds 170 pounds and Austin Bryant watch him run at 265 pounds Carroll's trying to get around to get to the corner and of course Daniels is there or Daniel I'd rather is there but Austin Bryant with some tremendous speed and Kendall Joseph too so the middle is clogged they're fast sideline to sideline they cover well There's not much to work on against this Clemson defense Need 11 on third down. Pressure. Jackson escapes, flips it short. That's Dalton Keene, the true freshman H back, a very short gain to the 25. It looks like the field goal team's coming out. They showed five and even six man pressure at the line of scrimmage and then dropped and they only rushed three and yet they're still in there because they confuse that offensive line and I knew the right side would struggle that time Kyle Chung completely whiffed and allowed them to be able to get the pressure in on Jackson Joey Sly is a senior he's been steady at times but he's struggling this year this is from 43 yards a much needed three points to get on the board here three minutes before halftime and he's able to knock it through He's a terrific kickoff man. He's been a little bit erratic. Justin Fuente not exactly filled with tremendous trust for his kicker. Some uncharacteristic misses in recent games, but he knocks that through. And Virginia Tech completely outplayed in this half, Kirk. 
hanging around down just seven. So sort of shades what we saw in the championship game last year. Yeah. Corner at the three. Andrews coverage team. Knocks him down at the 23. Nolan Turner made the tackle. Cassidy. Thanks, Chris. Dr. Pepper championship drive update. Top rank Alabama hosting Ole Miss. Shea Patterson picked off by Levi Wallace. Bama with its first non-offensive TD this season after having 11 last year. It's 21-0 tied over on ESPN in the ESPN app. Chris, Herbie, back to you. The, the, the receivers know that you should need to tackle yeah. the guy once he makes the pick, right? Yeah, I, I thought maybe it was they blew the whistle dead. The receiver looked like just, he just shut it He was not interested down. in making a tackle. No. no, that was it. Looks like it's fitting to get ugly there again in the Alabama game. Jackson, it's a design run and a very safe call to the 25. BMW halftime report coming up. Kevin Nagani, Mac Brown, and Booger McFarlane update you what's going on. Not a great deal of urgency now for the Hokies down by 14 here. They flip it to Phillips. Let's see if he can make a play. He's been bracketed and well covered all night. Does get out near the 40 before field stop. And we've got a couple timeouts now, here. Now, now you're going to start to see a little bit more urgency. They're thinking about field goal now. Two timeouts. Phillips is the key target. Clock moving again. Jackson takes a look and it's incomplete. That was off the hands of Sean Savoy. Clock will stop with 39 seconds. Just so people understand the difference between what Clemson has offensively, where you have Deion Kane and you have T. Higgins and Hunter Renfro and Ray Ray McLeod and Amari Rogers and you have the backs. What what Virginia Tech is building, they're trying to get to that level, but they have a freshman quarterback and they have Cam Phillips and a true freshman in Sean Savoy, and those are really their two targets. So it's a very, very different way of attacking for Clemson versus what Virginia Tech's trying to manufacture. They got to manufacture about 30 yards to get in reasonable field goal range over the middle. It's Phillips who's loose and a completion to the 40. Tanner Mews stopped him. And see if they spend the time out here, 33 seconds as they stop the clock to move the chains. 21 yard gain. That's a good job of being able to get between coverage. A mix up there with Tanner Muse. And a slant and a short completion to Carroll who's tackled at the 35 and now they'll have to spend one of those timeouts with 21 seconds remaining. Yeah I think a little bit of confusion here with the motion from Carroll. You see Carroll work down here. Watch Tanner Muse get a little bit confused on who's going where. He goes to the outside then he tries to recover to come back to the inside and we just said the one guy you got to stop is number five Cam Phillips and I'm sure Brent, Brent Venables is talking to Tanner Muse right now about that. You want to save a timeout for the field goal attempt. They're down to one now. Sly has got a terrific leg on the kickoffs. Has not been an accurate long distance field goal kicker. He did make one from 58 in the spring game. It was not a real game. Right now, they don't move it closer. The field goal attempt of about 53. McMillan in the backfield. Picks up the blitz as Jackson looks far side, a looping throw, jump ball incomplete. That was very well defended by Ryan Carter, who's been terrific. Phillips, the intended receiver. I cannot say enough about that technique from Ryan Carter. Look at his eyes. Completely turned around, which allows him to go up and find the football. How many DBs do you see never get their head turned around? Ryan Carter textbook on reading the receiver, knowing and expecting the football, turning around and going up and knocking that ball away. It's third and five. They need a few yards to give Sly a decent chance of cutting into this lead. They roll the pocket. Jackson looking, looking, delivers over the middle. Catch made. It is a first down. Eric Kuma, just his second catch of the season. And he did fight to get out of bounds. Seven seconds to go. 6'2, 220. Pretty good effort, wasn't it? Sure was. catch. Every yard counts. Very inexperienced sophomore receiver. And they did not rule that he got out of bounds. So they have to spend the timeout with seven seconds to go. They're in field goal range. Do they risk another play here? No, no I don't think so. It's their last timeout. The, the, 
Whether you want to set up the field goal and give your kicker a chance. Well, you said it. Kuma fighting and, and scratching for the yards that could lead to three points. Well, he got an extra four or five yep. yards from where he caught the ball and where Clemson's defenders were on him. So Sly, who's field goal earlier meant that he scored in 37 consecutive games that ties Shane Graham as Virginia Tech record he got a chance to leave here as the all time leading scorer in Hokies history but he has struggled throughout his career in these long distance field goal attempts this one from 45 and that was good earlier from 43 slight angle make it an 11 point halftime lead and it is going to slide wide right so no good let's check this snap and the hold it looked very hurried yeah well I think the the hold got a little bit away from him gets the ball down actually ends up at the end getting it down pretty cleanly but it Sometimes can affect the, the kicker and his confidence when he sees the ball is you know, he's trying to work to get it down. I actually think that Radburn is the punter. The Aussie did a pretty good job getting that down. Sly had a chance, but the Hokies come up empty in their final possession of the first half. Ryan just takes a knee. Clemson dominance taking some of the wind out of the sails of this raucous crowd. And the Tigers will get the football to begin the third quarter. End of 30 here in Blacksburg. The BMW halftime report right after these messages. It's okay that everybody. Welcome to the BMW halftime report. There it is, the big play of the first half. Kelly Bryant, the Tavian Feaster, 60 yards. Clemson on the road in Blacksburg, up 17 to 3. Feeling good and looking good so far against Virginia Tech. Meanwhile, undefeated Wake Forest taking on a winless Florida State team. Yeah, Florida State winless. Tied at 19. About a minute left to play. True freshman quarterback James Blackman, his best throw booger right here to Den Tate. Nice catch. Dropped the dime, efficient, was protected, felt good. Man, you can't throw it any better than that. Six seconds to play. Wake Forest down to their last try. The Hail Mary, and this looked good, Max. Scotty Washington, he has the ups, but Derwin James bats it down. Yeah, it's a big win for Florida State on the road, but they're going to have to be more balanced, get more passing yards out of James Blackman next week. He had about 30 the first three quarters, had 90 yeah. the fourth quarter. They can't beat Miami unless they're balanced. Yeah, final day of September, Florida State gets their first win of the season. And really the big story, of course, in the conference in the country tonight is what we're seeing from Kelly Bryant against this Virginia Tech defense. What are you seeing? Well, he's poised, and we knew Bud Foster was going to blitz him a lot. Every time Bud Foster brings a blitz, Kelly Bryant's got an answer. He's running the football, he's throwing, he's finding the open man. I'm seeing a poised quarterback in a big road test. Yeah, when people blitz a guy like Vince Young that we yes. had at Texas, you miss a tackle, there's nobody there. So Kelly Bryant's making a lot of plays with his feet tonight. Poise on yeah. the road. Yeah. Very much poise. Young poise. Yes, yes. Uh, we got a shocker brewing at Baton Rouge. Booger. Um, wow. Yeah, wow is maybe the only word you could use here safely on the air. Uh, Troy. <laughs> and I got to sit next on to On the it. road at number 25 LSU. The dogs, they were 20 and a half point dogs, and we see Jordan Chun, big yardage there, 74 yards, punching it in here. It's 24 14, Troy. Troy is physically beating LSU up front, and that's a surprise. LSU had won 49 straight non conference home games coming in. Meanwhile, number one Alabama handling their business against Ole Miss. Bo Scarbro just handing the ball. Yeah, they're mad over those couple of losses to Ole Miss, so this is not going to be a good night for the Rebels. Yeah, the defense responding too. Here's a pick six. Levi Wallace, 35. Five yards to the house and Trem Bama. Tremendous pick six. Notice when he picked it, they set the wall up almost like an offensive play. They love it. Yes. They all love it. We've they're seen that the last it. couple exactly. years. They've done this. On the Plains, number 13, Auburn. You know, their only loss is to Clemson taking on Mississippi State. Yeah. Jarrett Stidham is waking up. 
and mm. he's become the complete package. They've been really good under Kevin Steele on defense. Look out when that offense catches up. They're in control. Meanwhile, speaking of in control, it wasn't Peyton or the Mannings. Uh, they wish they were in control because Tennessee's offense. Yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, freshman Jake Fromm and Georgia, Javon Wims, nice catch there. And the freshman quarterback looks great. But to me, this is what makes him special. He can drop back. Everyone's covered. Now a takeoff and Jake from State from showing the athletic ability. Dogs going to the ground. They rush 55 times, 294 yards as a team. Sony Michelle, 21 yards. They held Tennessee to 62 yards rushing, one of 12 on third down, and forced four turnovers. George is the real deal, Booger. Yeah. Absolutely. And Tennessee, the opposite. 41 0 the final. It marked the first time the balls were shut out since Peyton was a freshman in 1994. But you saw this coming, though, especially against UMass, how they played even early in the season against Georgia Tech. Oh, things are not good right now in Knoxville for Butch. Meanwhile, Florida at home. Remember, we saw that a couple weeks ago. Florida escaping against Tennessee and now at home against Vanderbilt. Vandy in this series since 1989, just one win. Uh, Luke Del Rio making his first start for the Gators. Ooh, he took a major hit here. Brandon Powell, 11-yard game, but he lands hard on that left shoulder, had surgery on it in the offseason, and he's done for the season college career. Feel bad for Luke Del Rio, but I think in, in a... In a a bad way this is going to help the Gators because now Felipe Frank can get all the reps as a starting quarterback. You're and they're going to have to get better. They're, they're going to have to get better at quarterback before they win big. And how do you do that? Run the football. And Michael P. Ryan, three touchdowns. Gators get the win. Homecoming next week against LSU. Let's take a look at the BMW Ultimate Performance nominee from Saquon Barkley. He did it all. In a game, he just had 56 yards rushing. He added to his Heisman resume, a 98-yard kickoff return to open the game against Indiana for a touchdown. His first career passing touchdown came in the fourth quarter. Number 26 is the man as Penn State dominates Indiana 45-14 in those old-school threads. And right now, Ohio State on the road up 35-0 against Rutgers. Oklahoma State, how are they responding in Lubbock coming off a loss? Find out. The BMW Halftime Report is brought to you by BMW. We only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. Breaking down. Welcome back to the BMW Halftime Report. 162 games come down to one. One chance to shine. One chance to ride. Home run number 50. One chance to keep the season alive. The 2017 American League Wildcard Game, Tuesday, 8 Eastern on ESPN. Peeking in on a couple of other games going on right now. South Carolina taking on Texas A&M. Kevin Mack and Booger with you. And Jake Bentley, 45 yards to Shai Smith for the touchdown. That play made by Jake Bentley's athleticism eluding the rush. Carolina right now on the road, up by 10 in the third quarter. NC State coming off that win against Florida State, taking on Syracuse. This, this was a close game. Ryan Finley to Stephen Lewis. Touchdown Wolfpack on the board first, Mac. Well, Syracuse is getting better. They played LSU down to the wire last weekend. This would have been an easy game for NC State after beating Florida State last week not to play. They played really well and did enough to win. Jalen Samuels, the end of round. Sick moves right there, that hesitation, then the inside cut. The Wolfpack survive 33-25 at home. Meanwhile, North Carolina losing to Georgia Tech, just run the football tech over 400 yards on the ground. Notre Dame dominating Miami of Ohio. North Carolina, Notre Dame next week meeting at Chapel Hill. Oklahoma State coming off their first loss of the season. Now in Lubbock against the Texas Tech team. That's 3-0, Mason Rudolph. Ooh, the laser. James Washington. Yeah, Texas Tech's playing a lot better defense now, which gives them a chance to win. They've got to overcome eight straight losses to Oklahoma State, which is a hard thing to do. Cowboys up by four right now at the half. Checking in uh, on uh, the Pac-12. Washington in control over Oregon State. How are you? I'm Scott Van Pelt with the Sports Center right now. Saturday afternoon in the Bronx, Aaron Judge, home run number 52, a 2-0 pitch, and he destroys it 
won't catch Giancarlo Stanton. The Yankees won't catch the Red Sox either. Boston wins the American League East. That means Tuesday night, 8 Eastern. It'll be the Yankees and the Minnesota Twins in the American League wild card game. And Monday Night Football Week 5 will be the Bears and the Vikings. The Bears figured to be without Danny Trevathan. This horrifying hit on Devontae Adams Thursday night will cost him two games without pay. Trevathan, according to the NFL Network's Ian Rappaport, expected to appeal. Again, Trevathan suspended two games for that hit. We will see you over on ESPN after Alabama and Ole Miss for Sports Center. Enjoy the second half. The BMW Halftime Report is brought to you by BMW. We only make one thing, the ultimate driving machine. Time now for our prime time performers. Mac, who do you love? Kevin, we got to give Bryce Love some love because that guy got 301 yards and three touchdowns today. He is averaging 11.1 .1 yards per rush, leading the FBS. 1,088 rushing yards this season, fourth, uh, fourth most by any player in five games of the season. This guy's got to be right in the middle of the Heisman race. I like it. You're going him. I'm going to the guy that has the Heisman, Lamar Jackson. He did it all for Louisville in a 55-10 win over Murray State. 249 yards passing, 100 yards rushing while accounting for four touchdowns. It marked Jackson's FBS best 10th game that he was responsible for at least four touchdowns. Well, I'm staying with the quarterbacks. Pitts, Max Brown has to be feeling pretty good right now. 410 yards, four touchdowns. The Panthers roll over Rice. Marked the ninth 400-yard passing game in Pitt history. Came in his first start since losing the job prior to the Tech game a week ago. Clemson up 17-3, getting the ball to start the second half. That's coming your way. Set for the second half in Blacksburg. Welcome back to Saturday Night Football, presented by Wells Fargo, and this presentation of the ACC on ESPN. Now, Lane Stadium typically unhinged the Enter Sandman runout, Kirk, but once the game got going, it was the Clemson defense employing the seek and destroy approach. Well, they got it to 10 to 3, and, and it was about three minutes to go, or what is two or three minutes yeah. to go before the half. And, Clemson went right down the field in sixth place, scored a touchdown, got it to 17 to three. Now they get the ball to start the second half. Again, 17 to three, you still in the game. 24 to three becomes a completely different feel for Virginia Tech. This is a big, big series for both teams. Slide drives it deep. We've seen Clemson in these situations before. Same thing on the road against Louisville. Cardinals were trying to hang around a drive late in the second quarter, early in the third quarter. All of a sudden, the thing got completely out of hand. Dabo Sweeney really encouraging his team right now. He's in the middle of that pile, just walked out of it. He, he, he is saying the same thing. You know, you see it in college basketball. There are a lot of guys that believe at the end of the half, the start of the half, how big that is for their teams. And I think the same could be said for college football. They scored at the end of that half, and now Dabo Sweeney senses an opportunity to start this second half. But Foster's boys are going to have to step up here because Clemson's going to come at them hard. Bryant provided really the only spark in the running game in the first half. He ran it for 65 yards, threw it for 176. This is end around and drag and slam down as Amari Rogers, the freshman receiver. So a, a nice play by Mook Reynolds. Maria? Well, Chris, going into the locker room, Dabo Sweeney said that there were some missed opportunities on offense, but he's proud of the poise that his offense has showed in the first half. Now, defensively, he said they have to continue to do what they are doing, and I got to say that this defense has been challenging one another on the sideline every single time they enter the game. That's a good start, Maria. Rare to have Clemson behind the sticks. Second and 17. Bryant looks and fires near side. It's a battle. It's incomplete. Broken up, attended for DeAndre Overton, and that was Stroman in coverage. Yeah, that was a heck of an effort by Greg Stroman, the senior here, getting his hands on the ball. We talked about DBs turning and finding the ball. Watch him get in there at the last second. That last effort separated the ball from Overton. Kind of battles of the Tiger wide receivers won in the first half. Drives back in it now in third and 17. Usually his man's right here on third down, Hunter Renfro. They bring pressure off the edge. Bryant will be sacked. Adonis Alexander off the corner, and it's fourth down. 
They actually brought Chagag and the corner, Alexander. The running back picks up. Watch the running back, Feaster. He picks up one of the blitzers, and it frees up Alexander to get home to get to Kelly Bryant. We just talked about the importance of this drive to Dabo Sweeney. Got to believe that Bud Foster sensed the same thing and really challenged his defense to get after Clemson. And Alexander suspended the last couple of games for violating a team rule, making a play, and an impact as he returns to the lineup. Stroman is driven back by a good Spires punt to the 36. Looking for room. Cuts it back and will be dropped at the 45. So Hokies defense gets a stop. Now the offense gets good field position. The Tom. Chris, thank you very much. Talking to Justin Fuente, he said he was not too displeased with his team's performance. Where he was most displeased was at the line of scrimmage, not taking on Clemson with enough physicality. He also said they needed to adjust. They've seen some different looks from Clemson, and it starts in the second half. They got the defensive stop they needed. Now have to see if they get some surge and push to develop some offensive momentum, Chris. They haven't been able to block the guys up front, and they haven't been able to create big plays as a result just one play Kirk of 20 plus yards in the first half they average about six a game coming in against overmatched opposition McMillan tries to bounce it really has to fight and grind and still pushing the pile good effort to gain five <laughs> but he was at about two yards he gets ends up getting five and you know Tom one thing about how do you help the battle at the line of scrimmage could better field position with a freshman quarterback with a line that's in a, in a mismatch gives you a little bit more of an advantage on play calling. Well, in second and five, they'll run it again, and the ball comes out. Clemson says they've got it. It's a scrum. McMullen dropped the football. Dorian O'Daniel looks like he's at the bottom of that pile. It is the Knights' first turnover, and McMillan has had a little bit of a fumble problem at times in his career. Exactly what the Hokies did not need. They're still fight for that football. I think six is, six is at the bottom of that pile. Dorian O'Daniel. Dexter Lawrence reached around. He forced the fumble right there. Yeah, right there. It bounced right into his right into his lap. He's got the football right there. Comes and brings the offense out, and that is a nightmarish play for this Virginia Tech team. Not only did they lose a chance to cut into the lead but the Tigers are set up near midfield now sudden change could be a, ta a chance for Kelly Bryant to take a shot and the third turnover all season for Virginia Tech Feaster spun down after a five yard game especially after the defense gets a three and out they did their job they they, they set their offense up with great field position and just as they get settled in congratulating each other on the sideline they're rushed back out of the field asked to do it again big ask adjustments being made on both sides play clock at five and the flag is down before the snap, and that's a false start. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, number 75, five-yard penalty, second down. That's Mitch Hyatt, the left tackle, four such penalties so far for the Tigers. I was kind of excited to see the call there because rare occasion to see Dabo Sweeney yeah. jog down the sidelines, put, put his play chart up by his face. You know, usually he allows upstairs Tony, Elliott, Tony Elliott and Jeff Scott downstairs to call the offense, but... A little bit more involved tonight. Good point. He was excited about that play call. Yeah. He couldn't get the play off. Easter in the backfield. Bryant, straight run. Nothing adventurous about it. Very sexy, but just very effective. Very effective. I mean, when you're going to pick up eight or ten yards on a quarterback draw, it puts you in a much, much more friendly position at third and four compared to third and eight or third and ten. Yeah, Bryant coming in had 27 more carries than any Clemson running back. He has been the workhorse, as you said, a different way than Deshaun Watson ran the football. Tight man-to-man -man from Virginia Tech. On third and four, Bryant is, is running all the way, and he just 
finds a tight little crease there, gets through, shows the strength, moves the six inside the 40. See, the problem is because they can throw the ball so well and you play man-to-man -man across the board, if you're not going to account for the quarterback, the linebacker's got to make that play. And he's also dealing with a running back and, and Tavian Feaster coming out to block him. So it's feast or famine. You're, I mean, you're either going to give up the play through the air because the way Brian you throws. That pun? Yeah, a little Feaster, bit. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> for you. On first down, it's a straight run. And again, it's, he's in traffic, but he spins free. Takes a big shot. Brian again keeps the ball. Greg Stroman in the corner. They came up to deliver the block. But I don't know if, if Stroman took the, the, the shot there or if the quarterback Bryant did. I, I think Bryant 6'4, 220. Stroman's 180 pounds. You tell me who took the shot there. I see three and Maroon going backwards. Jermaine Edmonds contributing to the tackle. The way he's been running the ball, they'll take a two yard gain. Bryant flips it, and this is Milan Richard, the tight end, curled around, makes the catch down to the 30. It'll be 30 short. I thought Dabo made a great point with this this week about what he considers balance. It's not necessarily always run and pass. It's his theory is listen, the numbers are going to dictate what we do. If they're going to load up to stop our running game, hey, we're confident in Kelly and our receivers and throwing the football. If they're going to take away our ability to throw, like Boston College did last week, guess what we're going to do? We're going to run the football. And he thinks that's the answer to having a great offense is whatever defense takes away, you go the other direction. Feaster. Oh, they take it to him. Bryant converts the third down and a lot more still rumbling down inside the 10. Terrell Edmonds saved the touchdown. Well, that's a great read. He's reading Gaines, number 11, right here. If he collapses down on Feaster, which he does, you pull the ball out. If he stays wide, you give it. Gaines came down, great read by Kelly Bryant, and big yards for Clemson. And the Tigers are hammering away in this possession following the takeaway. Easter that time stacked up. Talk about the balance. Oregon, the only other offense in the FBS to get 235 rushing and passing. They're up 100 yards a game rushing over last year's Clemson offense. Yeah, it's a, it, again, it's a, it's a different feel. Uh, Deshaun was so special in, in such great command and, and so dangerous throwing the football. And think about who he had out there, Michael Williams and Artavis Scott and Jordan Leggett. It's a, it's a different different style, but still obviously very effective. Ryan still got the football. He was looking to throw, and now he's going to circle around, still spinning free, trying to make something of this. Still going, still going back down inside the five. That's a very exciting short game. Wow, that, that's one that Virginia Tech's got to be thinking. How do we not get him for a loss of about 15 yards? I mean, there are two different guys there that had a chance. And Kelly Bryant, keep telling yourself this, at 6'4", 220, he's not just a speed guy. He is powerful and yeah. runs out of those arm tackles. Gained the yard there. Now it's third and goal from the four instead of third and goal from the 20. Bryant's got it again. Trying to pick his way to the corner. He'll be knocked down just short. Reggie Floyd, the rover, saved a touchdown. Fourth and goal now. Well, they don't shy away from continuing to get him the football. He's trying to follow Feaster, but pretty good effort by Reggie Floyd to prevent him from getting into the end zone. The progressive pylon cam. See, he is clearly short. And Dabo Sweeney senses an opportunity up by 14. Absolutely. With the way their defense has been playing all night, makes a lot of sense. Feaster's in the game. Fourth down. Feaster. Touchdown, Clemson. Not really a gamble the way they've been running the football, but yes, Clemson does stretch the lead, and now some tempers flaring. They separate the players. That's a frustrating sequence for the Hokie defense, but you get a three and out to begin the half. The fumble recovery sets up the Tigers at midfield. They take 10 plays to grind it in five and a half minutes. Easter's second touchdown, a long reception, and now a short run. And the turnover after the three and out by the Virginia Tech defense. Gave him the yep. ball right near midfield and took advantage of it.
24-3 midway in the third quarter. That desperate need of a big play. It is all Clemson and Blacksburg. Four Sunday NFL countdown at 10 o'clock on ESPN. Sam Ponder, new host, and the gang, Ryan Woodson, Hasselbeck, Moss. All the news and fantasy information you need also on the ESPN app. So Clemson follows what's become a devastatingly effective pattern. You score late in the half, you score early in the second half, and all of a sudden it is a three touchdown lead for a defense that has been suffocating tonight. A high kickoff and Murphy comes up, takes it on the run, and gets out near the 30. And we'll take a break as the Hokies search for ways to dent this Clemson D. I want you to take it. Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Wells Fargo, is brought to you by the 2018 Ford F-150. It doesn't just raise the bar, it is the bar. The Home Depot, more saving, more doing. And Allstate and the Allstate AFC, a good works team, recognizing athletes for their charitable work. Visit ESPN.com slash Allstate to learn more. But Deshaun Watson giving his first game paycheck to a couple of Houston Texans employees who had lost everything in the flood. Part of what Davos Winnie talks about the Clemson culture. I mean, what a, what a phenomenal job that he did to do that. I mean, pure Very class cool. from Deshaun. That's the he's he's the best man. Not not only as a player, but the way he walks the walk. Josh Jackson, meanwhile, trying to gain some footing here. It's been a tough outing for a quarterback. He's been very effective and very efficient in the first four games, but a big step up in competition. They take it to Savoy, and there's a nice throw in the seam. And a completion out of the backfield is Deshaun McLeese up near midfield. Yeah, that, that was a well-designed play with a tight end, Chris Cunningham, taking the safety to the middle of the field. And it opened it up for McLeese to kind of follow him behind just outside of him. Please, he's got some quickness and he darts ahead. They push the pile into Tigers territory. Some serious urgency down three scores here. Here's this scene there in Houston. Deshaun presenting the paycheck to two incredibly moved and appreciative Texans employees. Not a bad check. No, not at all. First, his first career paycheck. Yep. First game paycheck. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Don't need to say anything more. That says it all right there. Mm -hmm. McLeese, game five, still in the game on second down. Jackson from the pocket, steps up, delivers. It's a crossing route, very short gain for Kuma. Second catch Master of the night will be third down. You know, there's the closing speed. Brent Venables, when he sits back in zone, how about the experience of guys like Dorian O'Daniel just sitting right in position, waiting for the ball to be thrown, then just rallying up, making a play, sure tacklers in the open space. Like everything you can say positive is what they are yes. defensively. Stop the run, pressure the quarterback and cover. Ryan Carter in coverage. Finds, locates the football, knocks it away. They're showing a little pressure here on third and three. They do bring the blitz. Jackson delivers incomplete. It was intended for Cam Phillips, and again, Ryan Carter in coverage, but the quarterback got hit. Uh, man, Cam Phillips has had a night. He has been shadowing Cam Phillips everywhere he goes. Ryan Carter does a great job here getting his hands on the ball. Ball's thrown out in front of Phillips, and Carter almost comes up with the interception. Offense still on the field on fourth down. You throw a little slant, and you still get... Cleveland Fair right in the quarterback's grill as he gets rid of the ball. McLeese is in the slot to the right. Monkeys desperately need this conversion. There is the top receiver. And now a whistle and a timeout. On defense, Venables timeout. wants to spend one right here in this fourth Clemson. down play. He knows that timeout this could just field. about secure the game if they can get the stop and get the football back. Let's take a break. Off the Clemson timeout, the Tigers defense back out there. Hokies need three. Desperately needed on this fourth down play. Looks like they're going to go with one of those quick huddles, see if 
Clemson don't give Clemson time to adjust to him. Here they come. Cam Phillips in a slot to the top. And Cleese and running back in the bunch formation to the right, empty backfield. Three down linemen for the Tigers. It's a different look. Yeah, they changed offensively, and now Brent Venables is changing his call defensively. It's a quick throw to the edge, oh, but Savoy, their freshman, just turns right back into Austin Bryant. And the defensive end makes a huge play. Not only did they not get the first down, the ball moves into Virginia Tech territory. How about they walk Austin Bryant all the way out there, 265 pounds? Look at him out there. And look at look at the tight end trying to block him. I mean, that's, a, man, that's just a man child. Austin Bryant playing out there in space, gets off of the block by Cunningham and makes the play. Great call by Venables again. It's a well spent timeout. A little shrug there, Joey Bosa style from Brian, who's now got seven tackles for loss. What an athlete. He can play in space, he can he can oh, do it all. Here comes ATN. And look out, this is the time when it's like a four by one relay, and he gets the baton for the anchor leg against the tire defense and just brings it home to the tape. Yeah, you better be careful. You cannot lose your focus or your energy with five minutes and you're down by 21. Maybe starting to feel sorry for yourself a little bit. We got to go back out here, plus territory for Clemson. Don't blink an eye because nine will end up in the end zone. ETN into the heavy traffic. In that last drive, ETN take a look at young again. Adam Smotherman. He's the get back coach. He just, his job is to keep Venables from running out in the field. He does it almost every play. Oh, Finally, ooh, look out. Did look not out. like the jersey tug. <laughs> <laughs> that is a tough job for Coach Smotherman. <laughs> He went over there and he pouted for a moment, but he's back out there. Yeah. He, this, he said, that's what you told me to do, Coach. He's got the face to go with it, too. It's like the bodyguard for the Venables. Third and seven. Uh, Clemson making their adjustments. Say what, this Hokie crowd is hanging in there, trying to make some noise, make it tough on this play. Ryan has good protection. It's a downfield throw. Looking for Renfro. Incomplete. The ball hung up there. It gave a chance for Dion Newsom, yeah, the whip linebacker, I to mean, come it's back. A, again, he throws the deep ball really well. I think it's the, the best pass that he has. It's the most where he's most comfortable. The ball is in his hands. But somehow, you're just not used to seeing Hunter Renfro, when he goes to the ground, lose control of the football. The ball is in his possession. But as he comes down, the ball comes out. But a great throw again by Kelly Bryant. So fourth and seven, and Will Spires will try to pin the Hokies deep. Will Spires back to punt. They don't go for the block. It's a very, very short punt. And coming up to make a fair catch at the 20. So only a 25-yard punt. Uh, Pacific Life game summary. Let's start with some of the plays of this Clemson defense made. This is the fumble recovery, the first turnover on Mellon. As the fourth down stop, Savoy just no chance against the defensive end. Yeah, I mean, it's great to see Austin Bryant back playing and doing such great things. And Kelly Bryant, one of his big plays early in the first half, found an open Feaster going down the sideline, and then Feaster for his second touchdown. Josh Jackson and this Hokies offense. Sean McLeish tailback. And there's a downfield throw. Carroll's out there. He's got it. Little slot receiver takes a big shot, but a nice throw. And the Hokies are into Clemson territory. Yeah, a little mix up with Van Smith and Jalen Williams. Watch him in the back end. Watch how they let Carroll sneak behind them. I think Van Smith, 23, maybe makes a mistake. He and Jalen Williams come up. And let's face it, Virginia Tech has an attack downfield. They may have caught him off guard. Jackson now rolls and throws. Here at the practice, you saw C.J. Carroll. He's listed at 5'8", and he's is, is quite generous. I mean, an ex-walk-on, but got the scholarship after last year. What, what a, to, to play this game at that size. I mean, oh, it, it tells you one thing you can't measure is his heart and just his determination. You're right, they list him at 5'8", but standing next to him, I... I don't think he's that tall, but he's tremendous quickness and just a determined football player, and that's why he's out on the field. He's catching that 35-yard gain. 
Second and ten play action. Jackson just nowhere to go. Desperately trying to escape. Throws it downfield. Ill advised into traffic. Was looking for Phillips. Could have been intercepted. Ryan Carter again in the neighborhood. Yeah, in his defense, it's been a rough night. He's down 24 to 3. He's trying to make a play, and he should have just thrown it away. It's something he'll learn from. And Carter again gets his hand on the ball. There's Isaiah Simmons, who's a freshman, almost comes up with the interception. Simmons kind of broke up the attempted interception. Yeah, by Carter. Yeah. I mean, again, it's easy to sit here and say, what's he doing? Again, it, this he's a freshman and he's fighting for his life out there. No, I get your point. Trying to make a play. Third and ten. Pressure comes again from the pocket. Across the middle. Phillips almost stumbled. Still running. Stiff arm battling, but chased down by O'Daniel. It'll be fourth down. Pretty good hands. Always want to see receivers with the ability to catch the ball with their hands. This ball is thrown hard on a shallow crossing route, and right there he goes up and secures that football. And gives him some positive yards, gives him a chance here on fourth down. They need four. Slant again. Wide open is Henry Murphy. And Murphy gets the first down. They still. Can't pen him in. He squirts out into the red zone. Much needed. It was the right call at the right time. Blitz the linebackers. Ryan Carter down. Looks like near the end of that play. They blitz the linebacker and it frees up Murphy to come underneath where there's nobody. Great recognition. Good job by Josh Jackson sitting in there and getting the ball out of his hands quickly. Giving Murphy a chance to run with it. Yeah, Carter hurt himself on the tackle and we'll take a break. Here's the fourth down play. Yeah, they blitz the linebacker Trey Lamar. So you can see the big boy in the middle of that defense. Jackson gets the ball out quickly to Murphy. There's that collision with Murphy and Ryan Carter. Ryan Carter right there, that right shoulder. He was helped off. An obvious pain. 20 yard gain on that fourth down play. Sets him up in the red zone. Now, Harrell looking to throw. It's just mauled. Dorian O'Daniel clobbered and they wanted to throw the ball. Well, with the closing speed right here, Dorian O'Daniel makes it really hard. We saw this play. You wondered if they might call it, but look at that speed, Torino Daniel. I, every time we call a Clemson game, I tell you that he is a high school tailback that runs a 4-4, that is playing linebacker at Clemson, and really with Ben Bulwer moving on, has become one of the leaders of this defense. You know, we thought they might see that play. They lose eight, and now it's Phillips spinning down inside the 15. Get back to third and makeable now. Remember Ryan Carter out of the football game, so you're seeing a different coverage. This time it's Wallace that's in coverage. This is great timing. You see him in a, right out here. Wallace giving him a little more, bit more room than what Ryan Carter was doing. Now Phillips is on the sidelines hurt after his sixth catch. He five on third down. Tigers bring pressure again. Jackson will be dropped. Just no chance. That was Isaiah Simmons flying in. Safety. And again, it's it's just a, a a lot to deal with. Austin Bryant ends up dropping. Here's the blitz that actually ends up getting there. Watch how he delays Simmons. Nobody can pick him up with the confusion. You got two linebackers walked up tight. They end up coming, occupying the lineman. Bryant drops back, and here comes Simmons late clean to get the sack. So now in the final minute of the third quarter, Sly is one for two. Comes on for a 38-yarder, and it's a fake. And Clemson is all over it. Sensing that maybe a field goal to cut it to 18 wasn't what they were doing. Trey Lamar, they, they got him on a fake punt last year in the conference championship game. High fives on the sideline there. They were ready for that. Well, when you come into Lane Stadium, even though Frank Beamer isn't here, Beamer ball still lives. One team you never want to be caught off guard by running a fake anything is Virginia Tech. Dabo Sweeney kind of had a little smile on his face like, 
Way to be ready, fellas. Way to be ready. Told you they may call it. Danny Perriman is the special teams coordinator for Clemson. He was an assistant for Beamer for eight years here. And Fuente needing some bag of tricks. They tried the, the end around pass, didn't work. Big field goal, didn't work. Almost everything hadn't worked tonight. ETN out of the backfield. Wyatt was looking that way briefly, but he's going to be sacked. Trayvon Hill off the edge. Yeah. Hill gets the sack. Coverage gets the assist. Looking to his left. Look at the coverage. Great job of matching up, taking it away. And that's one he's got to come off a little bit quicker to try to either get out of there or find a receiver he can check down to. The defending ACC and national champions up by three touchdowns after three here in Blacksburg. Back after this message and a word from your local ABC station. It seems like every financial company talks about invest. Beginning of the fourth quarter, when in doubt, Frank up enters Sandman again. The student section still jumping around, but a three score game as Clemson goes to work. They have a tremendous attitude here. It's really a no quit mentality. Virginia Tech, a long tradition of it. We saw it last year. Came from 17 down in South Bend to win. They were down 21. It comes into the ACC championship game. Ryan spun down. That, this has a much different feel to it. The offense in that game with Evans was able to run and throw the ball effectively. Well, when you're, you're Justin Fuente and your your second year as a head coach in, in a with a program you're trying to build back up as a top 10 power. These are important quarters when you're down 24 to three. You're trying to build a, that foundation. Because they're going to recruit well, they're going to get back, they're going to get more talented. But you want you want that backbone, that that traditional hokey backbone. And they want to, players to fight when they're down 24 to three in the fourth quarter. Tigers need 17 on third down, and Bryant to Kane, it's incomplete. And a foot on the back shoulder, Strowman in coverage, and here comes the punt. Yeah, the two. If, if you're a future defensive coordinator watching this game, the two things you're watching from Kelly Bryant. Is his ability to throw the deep ball, the fade, and when he gets one on one, he's going to throw that ball pretty accurately. And when he gets the third down, he's going to look to Deion Kane on that back shoulder fade. You know, those are two things that if you're going to defend these guys, you better be ready to try to take that away and make him go somewhere else. Will Spires in his end zone. Greg Stroman standing about midfield. Hokies have not often come off after a punt tonight. It's a very low kick. Stroman hustles up, makes the catch on the run. Stroman turning the corner and taking it to the house. No, he's tackled inside the five. A saving tackle there. Tremendous effort by Isaiah Simmons. Stroman thought he was going to score. I did too. But the big return sets him up inside the five. I, I love the effort by Stroman in a, almost a full sprint. Instead of giving up on it, he's very deep. But watch him full sprint, catches the ball, and running downhill. And that, the, you know, the, the coverage team, I think, not ready to deal with him running that fast at the progressive pylon cam where he just comes up a little bit short. Simmons, tremendous hustle. There. Yeah. I'd say he has a really bright future as a freshman, but he's been making plays tonight, back in even the secondary, now on special teams. So 42 yard return sets up the Hokies at first and goal. Got Keen, the H back in the backfield. This is Savoy on the end around. He'll score. Tech's first touchdown tonight. He said it the never quit mentality yeah. of this program. Yep. Big, big return. Obviously gives them great field position, and they don't wait to get it right into the end zone. And like that a couple scores second touchdown in Savoy's career the first as a runner and the extra point is good so it is a two touchdown lead 14 minutes to play here at Lane Stadium 
trusty real men Curtis in the all hands in all state bus helping us find great teamwork in the community all season long. Yep. Each weekend during the Saturday night football coverage we'll be doing our all state all hands in pick of the week this week it is Georgia number seven dominating Tennessee. Held him scoreless for the first time since 94. Nick Chubb a great game and that defense might be the best in the country. Oh Georgia looking good. Sly a line drive kick right through the end zone. Number seven is too low. Oh, they got to be up in the top four. I, I know USC lost, but even before that, forgetting yeah. that, I was Georgia they, night in the top three. They, they, they beat Notre Dame, and I, I, I really thought TCU last week made a statement with Gary Patterson. But I think Georgia, after this week, what they've done in these first five weeks, you go back and look what Jake uh, Fromm has done going in, inserting him at quarterback. They're, they're a total team now, complete team, and has some big wins. I, I know problem putting Georgia in the top four. You, you live in the state of Tennessee. How, how's the mood going to be there after the balls got whooped at home? Mm. Won't be, uh, won't be real good. I don't think. You saw the smile on the face of Kelly Bryant coming out of the huddle, still unfazed by anything. Back to work with a 14-point lead. And it's Feaster. Just in the middle, and this crowd is jumping around, fired up. They're, They've been waiting. Have belief. They've been waiting. To all game to really get back into the game after Inter Sandman. They they've kind of had to wait for an opportunity to get back and believe in that, that big return from special the special teams setting up the touchdown. Now it's back up to the defense to see if they can get a stop. They take it to feast here. Brian throws across the middle looking for Kane on the yeah. slant. Here comes a flag. Terrell Edmonds was in coverage. Edmonds is a safety, but they trust Pass him to play man to man. Defense number 25, 15 yard penalty, first down. Because of his background, playing some corner, it looked like that right hand got a hold of the jersey. When he, when Deion Kane made that move to the inside, I think, I think Edmonds grabbed a hold of the jersey, and that's why they ended up throwing the flag. Pass interference, a problem for that Tech defense. A year ago against Clemson in the championship game. Right away they move Adonis Alexander into that boundary receiver, which is Deion Kane. Last year it was Mike Williams. Over the years, Martavius Bryant, they've had some great ones. So Alexander now gets to Chora trying to stop Kane. Bryant is cooled off after halftime, just one of four. All near midfield. It's Feaster on the pitch. And a game of three. Really is no margin of error for Virginia Tech's defense. This late in the game, down by a couple of scores, they obviously need to get the ball back to Josh Jackson and the Hokies' offense. And for Kelly Bryant, you're thinking, hey guys, they're starting to get a little bit of life. Let's try to put them away with a score. Tech has seven takeaways this season, none yet tonight. Rolling out, delivering a short pass. They were ready for that time. Milan Richard, they've done that a couple of times, but a nice play by Reggie Floyd. And actually, really good job of getting pressure on, on him by Edmonds. And then Floyd's right there in position. As soon as Richard makes the catch, Floyd right there to keep him short of that first down. Now you wonder is Bud Foster to bring pressure, play man to man? Clemson's had some success. Or do you sit back, play a little bit softer, and play some zone? You certainly keep an eye on number two as a runner. Bryant takes off and is going to be hit. Stop short. Tremaine Edmonds won that battle and it's fourth down. Wow. Wow, that time Tremaine Edmonds, 6'5, 250, and Bud Foster. Bud Foster said, him, after 23 years of being a defensive coordinator, I've never had a guy like this right here with his, well, that is textbook tackle, too, in the open field against a really good athlete, Kelly Bryant. Puts him down on the ground and hits him hard. You, you said that, but it's worth saying it again. 6'5, 250. Runs Long like arms. a deer. Yeah. yeah. He's still 19 years old. He's got yeah. an upside. He's the guy that got fooled and burned on that touchdown connection earlier to Feaster. At that time, stops the quarterback. And here's Spears at low line drive kick allowed the return last time this time he puts it high but very short and tech it back again. to work defense got a 14. saturday night football on abc is presented by wells fargo
Wells Fargo, building better every day. And in part by Pacific Life, experience the power of Pacific. Slip for the Hokies around the numbers retire. You saw Bruce Smith. There was a huge ovation for Michael Vick, in case you wondered how he would be received here. And of course, the biggest ovation goes to Frank Beamer. His number 25 was when he was a player. 29 years here as the head coach. He's have Coleman Fox in the game as a running back. And Jackson going to take a shot. And jump ball, but Phillips is very well covered. No flag. They wanted one on Tyree Rogers. The only difference here is Mark Fields. Watch him get in position. Watch him turn around. Now he looks for the ball, and now you're going to see two guys hand checking with each other. And because he's in position to go for the ball, he has every right to go for the ball as the receiver. And there's Fields, of course. They don't flag him. Second and ten. Incomplete, no intercepted. Swipe by Dorian O'Daniel, who's going to take it back. Bobbled by Henry Murphy, and the linebacker was right there to pick it out of the air and take it to the end zone. Two weeks ago, you and I called a game in Louisville, and he had a pick six in that game as well. Just the right place at the right time. Virginia Tech in not so much desperation mode, but obvious passing situation. Ball gets thrown out there. It's actually a really well thrown ball, but again, you just don't have any margin of error against this defense. Bobbles the ball, doesn't hold on to it. You know, Daniel capitalizes on the, the mistake by Murphy. It's very satisfying for O'Daniel as a playmaker. He was disappointed to be ejected for targeting from that ACC championship game against Virginia Tech, but he finds the end zone. Another takeaway. Clemson has cashed him in. Now it's back to a three touchdown lead. We're back at the Big Ten next Saturday night, presented by Wells Fargo, the Big House, 7:30 Eastern Time. That's the kickoff for all Big Ten games in prime time. As the Spartans and Wolverines, always a spirited, spirited rivalry. Michigan State with a. A big win today, said against Iowa. Give them a little bit more uh, momentum after a tough loss last week. No doubt, Michigan had the bye week to get ready. So Clemson back up by 21. We'll send out a new kickoff man, Christian Grooms, the senior left-footed kicker. Devon McMillan. And he's back deep. And it's a low boot along the ground here, and it's going to roll out of bounds at the one. So his career as a kickoff man may be brief. Let's take a look at the college football rankings brought to you by Allstate. The AP poll, Alabama hammering away at Ole Miss. Penn State very impressive today. USC of course went down in the Palouse. It's starting to get interesting in the top five or six with you know, Alabama, Clemson, Oklahoma, Penn State, Washington, and what Georgia's done. Uh, another impressive win today. TCU, even though they had a bye, they're, they're trending up. Penn State of Michigan on a collision course in Happy Valley. Washington continues to quietly operate in the Pacific Northwest. He's with the ball at the 35 after the penalty. McLeese is the back. Option. And a short game. Yeah, we talked to Josh Jackson. One of the reasons why I think he is such a tough dude is that he began his high school career imagine this at an overmatched program here on high in Ann Arbor he was 1 and 11 in his first 12 starts you know, freshman going into his sophomore year said told us he got sacked 12 times in one game finally his dad had him transferred to Saline another high school in Ann Arbor where they went to the state playoffs a couple of years but imagine that starting out 1 and 11 as a starter in high school sacked oh, I mean every time he dropped back to throw he got hit Back this time, gets it to McLeese in the backfield. I, I love when you asked him that. He said he was almost to the point of ready, being ready to quit. Right. But it also, once he got out of it, taught him some lessons about just toughness. Well, he, he said he had to stand in there and deliver the ball, knowing he was going to get hit time and time again. Austin Bryant, by the way, is the Tiger player down on the field, so we'll um, jump in while they check him out. But. 
think about that. You see all these college quarterbacks. Very few come from high school programs where they are losing and losing big like that. And it was interesting to hear his reaction about in the formative years what he got out of that, what he still, what he continues to get out of it. He said he started to take pride once he got out of that in being that quarterback that sits in the pocket, makes a throw, and, and gets hit. Instead of being shy about that, he said it taught him to almost look forward to it. Like, like he enjoys being able to show people that he can take that hit. And he's been hit a few times tonight. Yeah, Tom Brady, of course, who his dad, Fred Jackson, knew very well from being a Michigan assistant all those years through four different head coaches. Called to give him a pep talk as a high school player. He called him again uh, you know, when, he, when he got the job here as, as a starter. It's nice to have Mr. Brady's wisdom in your corner. He grew up really with his dad on the sidelines in Ann Arbor. Think about all the great players. We asked him, your favorite player of all time, he said, probably Braylon Edwards. And he said, Mike Hart used to come over and babysit. I mean, it, that's the kind of life that he grew up in. And when you're around that, I think, you know, one of the things that stands out when he left the room, we got done talking to him, is the maturity beyond his years, uh, the poise. I mean, they've got a very solid young quarterback for Justin Fuente to build on. And, and I know it's a rough night tonight, but if you're looking at building this, this program back up, pretty good to talk to recruits and say, hey, you want to play receiver? You want to play running back? We've got a pretty good quarterback for you to be able to play with. They desperately need to get high-profile recruits at the skill position to, yeah. to surround him with playmakers. The roster, very different if you look at these two teams. Uh -huh. Clemson much, much deeper. More elite players, but a lot more just excellent college football players, too. They flip it underneath there. This is Coleman Fox, one of the young guys, getting a chance to make a play. He spins up across the 40. It'll be a fourth down. Offense on the field, of course. You need four in this play. Tigers are showing pressure. And they back out. Only rush three. Jackson takes off, tries to spin, takes a hard hit right at the 45. Josh It'll Jackson be close. I think it was just enough before O'Daniel knocked him down. Yeah, again, they show that pressure. They're trying to create the confusion. He does get the first down. And then right at the snap, they drop everybody and just rush three and try to affect the eyes of the quarterback, Josh Jackson. To his credit, he didn't hesitate. He made up his mind right away to try to go get to the sticks. Three-man rush again. Jackson, plenty of time in the pocket. Now he'll just roll out. Flip it short. And the catch is made again by Fox. And Bowman Fox, a guy we've not seen a lot of this year, getting a chance against this big, bad Tigers defense. He kind of baited Cleveland Farrell here. Here, 99. Watch to the top left. Farrell's out in coverage as a defensive end. And he says, heck with that. He tries to go get him and pretty good job there just baiting him waiting and then just flipping it around him Fox picks up positive yards and Jackson rolling out flips it over the middle and all of a sudden it's all the little guys getting the ball there's CJ Carroll making a catch inside the 40 dangerous throw against this defense to throw back against your body but Carroll bails him out by coming back to the football Dangerous to make that throw, but credit Carroll for coming back, and Jackson's able to sneak that one in. And they flip it high. Coming down with it is Fox, and that was looped just over Austin Bryant. He's been playing all over the place tonight. Number one, it's great to see Austin Bryant back after being injured. He's back out on the field. How about the big man trying to make a play on the ball? He saw it. He just couldn't quite get his fingers up to either knock it down or intercept it. See, it's, look at it. Look at him looking up at the football. Oh, just misses it. Venables trying to make a tackle over there in the purple shirt. Look out, Malcolm. Ryan just reaches out one hand, like flings Fox down with no effort, <laughs> out of bounds. Third and nine. And just a three-man rush over the middle. It's complete. Phillips trying to make a couple men miss. Battles. Good job spinning down near the 31. He moved the six again. We talked about want to see some fight. Want to see this team just keep battling. That's what they're doing. Down 31 to 10 with under eight minutes to go. And they're getting some good reps against one of the top defenses in the country in this two-minute drill here. They pick it to Fox, and it's intercepted. Uh -huh. 
athletic play by Austin Bryant, who just is tremendously skilled player out there. What did they miss him last year? He came back late in the year, but had foot surgery and put a few screws in his in his foot. He was able to come back late in the year. He's right here, and instead of rushing, he's going to drop. And look at his eyes right on him. That is an incredible play. It's 6'5", 265. Farrell's in there, and then the right hand just brings it down. Soft hand. Draft look highlight guy. film. Draft highlight oh, yeah. film. Look at him smiling. <laughs> he's pumped. Is two put down there? Seven and a half to play. And for the third takeaway by this Clemson defense, all up in the second half. Hokies only had two turnovers on the season coming in. Lyant and Tigers to work at the 40. CJ Fuller could be lobby to see ETN out there. So he can provide that late game bolt of electricity that he has a couple of times already this freshman season. Clemson last week in the fourth quarter against Boston College really just took the game over. It was somewhat of a battle, seven to seven through three quarters. And then the fourth quarter, eight yards of play, and he was out there for a lot of those plays. 27 point fourth quarter, one of the better quarters I've ever had in ACC play. Got their young, some of their young receivers out there. Instead, the future veteran tailback is short game by Fuller. Tom? Herbie, almost as if uh, Bud Foster heard you challenged his charges here to go out three scores down deep in the fourth quarter, challenged their competitive spirit. Let's see what we're going to find out. There's a guy we know who's been doing it for nearly three decades at the top of the game and still trying to implore his charges to show what they can show here deep in the fourth quarter of a game that's gotten away. It says a lot about Bud Foster yep. and a lot about the competitive spirit that is Virginia Tech. Trying to, trying to build this brand back up and... One of the ways to do that is never to give up. Continue to fight all the way to the end despite the score. No doubt. Foster in his 22nd year as defensive coordinator. Dabo called a timeout. He did, and then Mahota charged in and, and knocked the quarterback down after the whistle. And the Clemson fans are still here are booing that. For the snap, timeout. Clemson. Second charge, timeout. 30 seconds. Mahota said he didn't hear the whistle. There isn't a flag, so we'll talk about it in third and six. But, you know, back to Foster, who did give great credit to Red Venables. He feels like the D.C. on the opposite sideline is kind of the state of the art right now. Both are Broyles Award winners, but, but 31 years at Virginia Tech for this guy as an assistant coach. Yeah, two of the top guys. Brent Venables right now, you'd have to put him right up there near the top in these last three or four years. What an amazing move for him, leaving Oklahoma, coming to Clemson to take over this defense. He's very well paid here, by the way. You, you look at these salaries, if you're not familiar with what some of the top coordinators in the country make, Venable's making $1.7 It's funny you bring that up because I, I talked to him this week about his desire potentially to become that head coach if, he, if, if, if the opportunity presented itself. And he said, you know, with, with where he is as not only a coordinator, Loves the school, loves the culture. His family loves the area. Hey, I don't. I don't think he's going to leave. ATN is going to be hit and knocked for a loss. So the young freshman has not been able to show his electric speed tonight. Javon Hill, Tim Settle, those starters all still in there for Foster's defense made the stop. It's fourth down. Well, after listening to Tom Rinaldi's report, what he heard down on the field, but Foster again. Got to be very happy to see his team. It's not necessarily at this point about the score. That's obvious. It's more about what kind of attitude you're going to go out there and play with when the chips are down. Meanwhile, Clemson is going to beat a top 15 team for the third time this year. Nobody's ever done that, beating three top 15 teams before October. It was all the way back to when the AP poll was first started in 1950. Stroman, a short return. This time as the Pacific Life game summary takes a look at the quarterback comparison. We knew this was going to be a test for both guys in different ways. For Josh Jackson, pressured a lot, 26 of 39, but not a lot of the big downfield plays. No, and I think the numbers really are skewed. After the game, the score got, uh, I don't want to say out of control, but the score changed the play calling for Clemson and for Virginia Tech. 
Jackson all of a sudden gets up to almost 40 attempts and Bryant became a little bit more of a runner once they built their lead up. Don't know how much in a three touchdown game they'll run Bryant but he needs just six yards to get back to back hundred yard rushing games. Hit that mark against BC last week. Coleman, Coleman Fox, Fox for a short game in the real. Chris, well, we've seen the defense produce three takeaways here in the second half, and I got to say, coming into it, Cleveland Farrell said that their focus was redemption after the ACC championship game. They feel like they allowed Virginia Tech to get back in it after having a 21-point lead and letting the Hokies make it a one-possession game. I got to tell you, this defense, though, has been a heartbeat on the sideline. They're the first ones to go up to the offense, the leaders, and Dexter Lawrence and Austin Bryan and Christian Wilkins. They want to be the leaders of this entire team on the sideline. That's a great point, Maria. You know, these guys, although they did win the ACC championship, they gave up five touchdowns. They felt that was unacceptable against Virginia Tech last year. Yeah, I, I've always loved this about this team and how when the backups get in there, what Maria is saying about the leadership. What? Watch the starters and how they're watching and coaching and yelling out to the, the guys that are in there as backups, and 42 leads the way in that effort. Austin Bryant right next to him. See him yelling, talking to these guys. Wilkins is a talker. You know, Bryant, okay. Dexter Lawrence, Cleveland Farrell, they all live together. Around the end is Coleman Fox, and this guy is showing a lot. He's, he's listed at 5'11, you know, just like CJ Carroll. I don't think he's quite that tall. But well, for an offense fighting. looking, offense looking for some playmakers and, and some live legs, he's been he's been one of the more impressive guys when he's he got his hands on the football. Again, meanwhile, for a, a Clemson yeah, defense that really didn't give up a touchdown drive, it was the punt return that set him up inside the five. They begin to look ahead, Kirk, and and, and find people capable of challenging the defending national champions in the ACC because it, it looks like they're going to be very solid favorites throughout with what's happened at Florida State, yep. NC State on the road. Coming up soon, Georgia Tech could be an interesting yep. game. Always interesting to play Paul Johnson's team. Jackson back pedals, flips it short. Fox is going to be hammered and knocked down by the backup middle backer, Chad Smith. And there, the star is enjoying it. Look at him. Look at them all. Farrell's there, Wilkins, Bryant. The guys that get all the headlines, all the notoriety. Some schools you see those guys sitting on the bench. Clemson, they're, they're helping. Brent Venables and the coaches coach him up. The guy who made the play. Chad Smith is a very good linebacker, by the way. Yeah. He'd be starting in a whole lot of places. Third and 12. Means a delayed handoff. Fox trying to pick in his way and navigating for a first down. So a guy who had done very little in the first four games comes in here and gets the nasty clubs and defenses out the game. I think there was a little bit of a bust there by Jalen Williams. Chad Smith at the end of the play kind of looked up and saying where was we, we have to cover that gap and Jalen Williams was there and he went out into the flat and coverage. Jackson steps up avoids the pressure took a peek downfield didn't have anybody and then will struggle for a yard. Yeah we're kind of not necessarily making light of it but I, I really do think oh, I hate to see this. The game players going down. The freshman Justin Foster. Athletic trainers looking at him. He talked about the obstacles ahead for Clemson. You know the, the computers, the FPI that rate each team's percentage of winning each game. Rated this is one of the toughest challenges, perhaps the toughest challenge for Clemson. And you've got Wake Forest at home next week. Syracuse. That's a Friday night game on the road. You, you think the Yellow Jackets there in Death Valley present a challenge late in October? I, I think I think it's a good Georgia Tech team this year. Taquan Marshall running that offense very very well, and it's always a challenge. By the the dates, the 13th on a Friday night gives them extra time to get ready for Georgia Tech, which is always important. NC State could be maybe the two toughest games they have left uh, with Georgia Tech and NC State. Now there's a rivalry game in South Carolina. You don't even mention Florida State at this point. With no, the just sneak out a win against no, the not, Forest I'm today. Not bringing them up. Without the Andre Francois, I just don't think that's a factor. Miami 
visiting Tallahassee next week. This November 4th is an interesting game, though, because you've got a Clemson visit to Raleigh, and then you've got the Hokies down in Miami, of course. That's a big, big game in the Coastal Division. Good technique there on the telly. I you? just jump across there late in the yeah, fourth quarter that's and good. give You're it a okay. chance. All right, week five. I'm going to give you the pin next time so you can use that. Uh, Miami looks good. Did you watch them? I did time? watch them against Duke, yes. Their defense looks good. I thought the quarterback, Rozier, looked nice. Is this the year they finally get the Seminoles? Mark it's been Rick close. is having a. Is, you're starting to see some Mark Rick intangibles and an attitude uh, on that football team. Playing with more, much more discipline than we've seen in recent years. Are we allowed to open the mic of Chris Felica, the Bear, the Miami uh, graduate? Sure. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to know, point, Mr. Felica, yeah. is this Miami team, is it, is it going to be ready to, to deal with it? You, you know the history of this rivalry against the Seminoles. He's already using reverse it, psychology. For it has been coulda, woulda, shoulda the last three years for Miami. I last know. year they blew a double-digit lead. Year before that, a fourth quarter lead and a double digit lead the year before that. So you're nervous. And they are going to be expected to be Florida State in Tallahassee on Saturday by a lot of people. And that's a team that hasn't won a big game in a long time. But how good did Miami look last night? They looked good. They're de you, you like 7 and 12 and 82 in those guys. They, yeah. look, they look like some old school Miami there. They look like this Clemson defensive line. I don't know about that. I mean, but, but I'm just saying, it's, they're starting to look like the way the Miami defensive lineman used to look. Isaiah Simmons thought he had a pick. You know what, Fleek? I love the turnover chain. I that, that is just a wonderful, wonderful innovation. They're more excited the about the chain than the turnover. <laughs> I'm more excited. I mean, they're on a full sprint to get over. Genius by Manny Diaz and the guys. You know, fourth and nine now for Jackson. Stands in there, fires into the end zone. Touchdown. It's Sean Savoy. Running free, and the Hokies find the offense in the end zone for the second time tonight. That's a nice throw. Really good throw. It gives you a little bit of a feel for what Josh Jackson can do throwing the football. Great read, good timing with the freshman Savoy. He scored both touchdowns tonight for Tech. In the round, and now this nice little post pattern. Ron Carter, who's had a terrific night defending, finally does get beaten on a play when it's decided. Those two posts. And one of them is going to take the safety, Denzel Johnson, kind of affect his eyes. He kind of gets out of position, then he's slow to react. And what a window there for Josh Jackson to make that throw. Well designed, great timing, puts it out in front of him, hits him in stride for that touchdown. There's so many similarities to the game we had a couple of weeks ago in Louisville where Clemson came in. There were some questions. How would they handle the road environment? It was a comfortable win. Then the backups gave up some scores and the, and the starters like Wilkins, they were very frustrated about some breakdowns late in the game, even though it's comfortably in hand. Well, they take a lot of pride in their scoring defense. And and also they want to see those younger guys do well should mention by the way remember we thought when Ryan Carter went down with, on that tackle attempt it looked like maybe he had a shoulder that was bothering him I just noticed he was part of the coverage team there trying to keep some boy out he in fact lined up against him so it's great to see Ryan Carter who we thought might be done for the night was back out there slide the ball falling off the tee as they line up for an apparent onside kick Mr. Herbstreet they might told you that the, the total yards category was now in favor of Virginia Tech, 342 to 315. Would that, would that surprise you? Yeah, it would surprise Leading statistic, to say the least. <laughs> Again, Clemson's, uh, their offensive plan changed dramatically after the lead. Inside kick is recovered. C.J. Fuller, their running back up there in the hands team, collects it. Week four Monday night football matchup. Redskins there ahead. Kareem Hunt, rookie sensation and the undefeated Chiefs Monday night countdown served by Applebee's at 60 Eastern on ESPN. The game also available on ESPN 2 in Espanol. How are your Broncos looking? It's interesting because Paxton Lynch, one of the guys that Puente worked with at quarterback at Memphis, he's said that he still talks to Lynch, still talks to Andy Dalton. That you know, Paxton has voiced some frustration, doesn't feel like he is where he wants to be. I hope I'm not taking a conversation online that was private, but uh, you know, listen, he's, he's a young quarterback. Still, 
and a lot to learn, but it's nothing easy about playing quarterback in the next level. Short game by ATN. Ford wrap up show after the game with Cassidy Hubbard. As Clemson again will go on the road to a juiced up, hostile environment and come away a victor. Eight straight now over ranked teams, 12 straight true road wins. I think we're done talking for the rest of the year about if Kelly Bryant and the Clemson offense can go on the road without Deshaun Watson and Mike Williams and Jordan Leggett and Artavis Scott and win. I think we're, that, that officially is I agree. put to bed. Zarek Cooper again to mop up here in the final minute at quarterback. ETN, look out, Careful. look out, <laughs> almost busted it. Finally wrestled that in the 30, inside the 30. And the true freshman very capable of punctuating this with another touchdown run. Boy, he is just so close. Known for his speed in his early part of his career, but his lower body strength gets balance him too. out of tackles. The great balance, and they say he and he's one of these guys that within two two steps can get to that full speed. In the month of September, which has about 25 minutes left in it, Clemson's going to beat a third top 15 team. We're saying again that's never been done since the AP poll came about. Kelly Bryant take a little video to mark another successful trip on the road. And the ACC champions in this rematch of the championship game win it by 14. Out gained, but again, incredibly misleading. Three takeaways by Clemson's defense were huge tonight. Let's go down to Tom Rinaldi with Dabo. Chris, thank you very much. Dabo, a lot made of the atmosphere here in Lane Stadium. You obviously prepared your team well for it. What did they show you tonight? Well, they were ready to play. I mean, it was a four-quarter game. We had some had some uh, missed opportunities in the first half, but you know, we I thought we complimented each other well. We got off to a good start. We were ready right out of the gate. I think we had a three and out. Then we went down and got some points. Yep. Came back with another touchdown. But we just played a good game. Had a couple of miscues, but this is a good football team. I mean, we had no uh, you know crazy thoughts that we were going to come up here and and just you know not have a tough fight on our hands. This is a, a, a well-coached team and. And uh, proud of our guys. We played great defense the whole way. Hey, we got that last one right there, but really proud of the team effort. First team to beat three teams in the top 15 in the month of September ever. Is that right? Yeah, that's true. What, wow. what has taken shape so fast quickly? How, how many teams have played three top 15 teams? Probably not many, so. <laughs> what do you we'll take, take it, though. What do you take from that, though, Davo, about the, the early stages of this season when so many yeah. questions were after Deshaun? Well, we've got uh, a good culture in place, you know, and guys, uh, they care about that Paul. They care about, you know, uh, the foundation of our program, and we've talked a lot about that, but, you know, just speaks to our preparation, you know, how we prepare in the off season, how we prepare in camp, how we've developed our players. I mean, it's, a, it's everything, but the biggest thing is we're battle-tested, and, uh, you know, we love opportunities like this. Uh, just hats off to our guys to, to come on the road in a really – tough place like this and listen we may have to play these guys again it's a great football team Justin's doing a heck of a job got a lot of respect for Virginia Happy Tech but show. hey we had a great September and that's it you know they're gonna make us play October and November last time I checked so we got a ways to go well done we appreciate it Dallas. thank you man good to be with you. Maria thanks Tom well we have Kelly or Austin Bryant here and you were a part of a defense that was able to get three turnovers in the second half what was the mentality coming into this game um, we knew last year we didn't finish the game like we were supposed to so that was a big emphasis for us this game is to come out in the second half and really kind of put it away in the third and really finish in the fourth and uh, that's what we we're able to do come out here and create three turnovers in the four, uh, last half of football and one of those turnovers was created by you it was after you went out we all thought you were injured and you come right back in and get a turnover walk me through that play um it was crazy because the play before it was the same situation uh, i missed the bubble screen and i was like i'd never get an opportunity like that again then the next play i got another shot and i was able to capitalize on it and uh, just thank my teammates for you know being in position and uh yeah, it was a great play. <laughs> All right, the defense has been the heartbeat of this team. How do you continue to grow and mature as a unit? Uh, we're still early in the season. Still a lot of football left to be played. Uh, so we just got to continue to work and practice, continue to take coaches, continue to go through the process and not take anything lightly and just play each game like it's our last. And uh, if we do that, you know, we'll be fine. Thanks for your time, Thank Austin. Thank you. All right, God bless. Thank you, Marie and Tom. Dabo referenced it quickly. Could be a rematch. The Hokies are still strong contenders in the ACC Coastal. Yeah, it's that side of the, of the ACC wide open. But, again, 
just a great performance. Clemson on the road, takes care of business, and as he said, it's September. we still got to get a long way to go before we accomplish our goals. You know, Lane was all jacked up, but it's all about the paw at the end of the night. Tigers 31, Hokies 17. Game produced by Bill Bunnell, directed by Derek Mobley. We'll see it in the big house, Michigan and Michigan State, 7.30 Eastern here on ABC. Time now for the Ford Wrap-Up Show to Cassidy Hubbard. Thanks, Chris. So Clemson getting its third ranked win in their first five games. And they don't face another ranked team in the remaining regular season schedule, creating quite a favorable path to the ACC title. Meanwhile, can anyone stop the team in front of Clemson? The Alabama Crimson Tide, and they were taking on Ole Miss. And the Tide's defense finally joining the party. Levi Wallace gives Bama its first non-offensive touchdown this season after having 15 last year. Tide are rolling over on ESPN. Now, is Auburn still a likely challenger to the Tide in the West? Well, they took care of business against number 24 Mississippi State, Jared Sidham. Passed for 264 yards and two scores, and Carrion Johnson ran for three in the 49-10 win. Now in the SEC East, Georgia and Tennessee. Georgia up 17-10. Jake Fromm continues to impress. Meanwhile, this sums up Tennessee's day. Trevor Daniels punt way too low. Deflecting out of bounds shy of the line of scrimmage. Georgia blanks the balls. 41-0. Number 21, Florida hosting Vanny. Late in the fourth quarter, Gators up 31-24. Fourth and one. And Malik Davis, bye bye Florida with five rushing TDs in the 38-24 win. A big shocker in the SEC. Number 25, LSU trailing Troy. Last chance for the Tigers. Danny Etling picked off. LSU's 49 straight non-conference home game win streak snapped. Unlike LSU, number 10, Wisconsin, was able to overcome a halftime deficit and avoid the upset against Northwestern, improving to 4-0 on the season with a 33-24 win. And number 6, Washington, also remained unbeaten as the Huskies rolled to a 42-7 win over Oregon State. Meanwhile, Penn State Saquon Barkley keeps up the oohs and ahs. He had 205 all-purpose yards, even tossing a touchdown here. He also added a 98-yard kick return in this 45-14 win over Indiana. Thanks for watching the Ford Wrap-Up presented by the new 2018 Ford Escape. Always unstoppable.